So I'm sure Joe will join us, but as of now, Joe Marshall is not with us. Um, it is nine o'clock. So this special meeting of the Kenmore City Council is now in session. This is our uh, second half of our annual retreat. And uh, Michael, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I will go directly to the agenda um, with the topics that say they're under the 930 piece, but we don't have any carryover. So and we agreed to start at nine and that's what we're gonna do. Um, and so I think we just get right into it um, right away. Uh, there are some reference documents that you, you see in blue on your agenda. Oh, this is Obama pledge recommendations and ball field memoranda which will probably support discussions down the way, but I want to acknowledge those things there for you, I believe, um, if I have that right, correct. And the first one really is uh, police reform, county process, the police contract, and uh, I would hand that off to Nigel because I recall clearly that that was important to him to uh, check in with you on uh, today. So here we go. Yeah, so <clears throat> with the passages of um, Charter Amendments 5 and 6 last year uh, by the voters in King County. Um, Charter Amendment 5 is going to change it so that we go back to an appointed sheriff, but Charter Amendment 6 really opens up the county council's ability um, to direct um, kind of what happens in the sheriff's office a little bit more. And coupled with that in the next year, um, starting relatively soon, uh, the contract with the uh, King County Sheriff's Guild is getting renegotiated. Um, I believe it comes to an end at the end of the year. Knowing how these things go, they'll end up going a little bit long. But I just want to make sure that this was on our radar as a city and as a council and that um, we make sure that we're weighing in, uh, especially, well, on, on both how contract, how Amendment 6 is um, what the council what the King County Council plans to do with Amendment 6. We don't know quite yet, but I, I think it's something that we should be monitoring as somebody, as a city who contracts with, with uh, King County. And also um, a lot of our frustrations that we, th th that folks have had with the ability to properly discipline um, police officers. Um, a lot of that is, is tied up in the guild contract um, as far as binding arbitration, all sorts of things. And I think it would behoove us to just keep an eye on contract negotiations and probably find some times to weigh in as a city. Um, I realize this probably will take a little bit of, you know, this kind of reminds me of after we got, um, after we got uh, 522 BRT on Sound Transit 3, you know, we spent some time uh, both at the staff level and at the council level monitoring that and making sure we were weighing in to, you know, with how um, our project was going forward. I think this, rises up to the same place. And I think that we should be spending both staff time and council time monitoring um, both the implementation of Amendment 6 and um, and the contract, uh, union contract negotiations um, as they go forward this year. So I just want to toss that out, make sure it's on our radar. Because um, I think that, you know, we heard from a lot of folks that um, police reform is a big issue that kind of reforming how we do public safety in general is a big issue in our community. And this is the most immediate place where we can kind of uh, make some semi-immediate changes. Uh, one piece of housekeeping, uh, Council Member Marshall is now present. Good morning, Joe and, and, and Brandon. Thank you for joining us. Okay, discussion. Nigel's kind of set, set the stage for the discussion. Angela, you're in the queue. Um, great. I agree with council member um, or deputy mayor Herbig. I was wondering if we had taken any actions um, specific to the recommendations that Chief Moen had presented in his summary. There were some Kenmore specific actions and then potential recommendations for F King County Sheriff's Office and King County. Um, was anything done with that to date? Rob? Well, yeah, I'll, Chief and I can, um, yeah, I'm just looking at the recommendations now. It's on page 16 of the, um, of the uh, report. Uh, did a couple things. Several of the things are um, ongoing and, um, 
and will will be coming soon, like add use of force statistics to the annual police services report. We do that report in March, so you'll see that in March. Um, add funding to the radar program. We did that in the budget. Um, I-940 implementation engagement, we're doing that. Uh, we just uh, closed the application process for the independent investigations team a couple of days ago, and we'll be interviewing candidates for that team. Um, and then uh, augment existing uh, training. That's an ongoing thing that maybe Chief can talk about. And then also increasing um, community-oriented policing. I'll let Chief speak to. Brandon. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Uh, so to just piggyback what, off of what Rob was saying, um, in terms of the training, um, like, like everything else in our world um, is somewhat complicated by COVID and uh, issues related to that. Um, we are planning on uh, augmenting the training that the Sheriff's Office provides in particular, um, as we spoke about before, the active bystandership and how officers, um, helping officers have tools to intervene um, on the actions of other officers. And that's something the Sheriff's Office is investigating on and trying to figure out how to roll out on not only a work site level, but also a larger department level. Um, of course, it's complicated by, um, by COVID. Uh, online training is nice, but it's not nearly as effective when able to do it in person in groups and having discussions and, and rolling it out that way. So kind of balancing whether to roll it out now versus doing it when we are able to come together as a group, um, it's kind of the issues that are being worked through. But uh, that is a process. We have begun uh, doing de-escalation, uh, the de-escalation in-service training once again. So um, see 11 of our 13 employees have been through that. Myself and our detective are the only ones who haven't been through it and we're scheduled here in a few months. So uh, we've gotten everyone through that despite COVID and that actually is an in-person training. So um, kind of taking some risks and getting the officers through that during COVID, but we've, we've been able to do that. Uh, Rob spoke about the I-940, the, the, the independent investigation team community representatives. Uh, we've received a number of applications and be going through the process to select and individuals for a list to be forwarded on for consideration of uh, the community representatives for that. The uh, radar program is continuing to roll along, roll along very well. Uh, we've added additional navigators who have been hired um, by the program to increase the amount of time that they're able to go out and as well as with the funds that the council established in the budget, the last biennium budget, um, allow them to provide dedicated co-responder time where they're going out and that's all they're working on is radar outreach for people with the mental health or drug dependency issues that um, need to be referred to services. So rather than going out and having to be distracted by other calls, they're solely focused on that. And so with that funding that the council provided, we're able to uh, do that here in the coming year and uh, we've already seen some success even uh, briefly in this year. In terms of the community already placing, it was one of the community, uh, the Kenmore centric goals we are planning on doing the nurturing trust workshops. Fortunately, it was supposed to happen last spring. Of course, it didn't happen. Um, we're hoping to do it last fall, it didn't happen. We're, we have it on the schedule for this spring. I, I really wanna do it in person. I do not wanna do it online. I, I think that loses all the value and it's gonna really, I think it'll lose a lot of the, um, the people in our community that may not have access to the uh, technological, or the, you know, Wi-Fi and whatnot that's gonna be able to allow them to participate. So I really do want to do it in person. And so we're probably gonna end up having to push that back into the fall and fingers crossed we'll make that happen. That was a, a big thing we want to do. Um, in terms of additional other outreach, we're continuing to do as much as we can with the schools uh, via Zoom and um, our increased social media presence to kind of um, provide some insight on what's going on in the community. And I've also tried to, as you've probably seen over the last year, uh, provide council more information as to real life things that are happening in the community on a daily basis, the calls that officers are going to um, versus just seeing the, the big incidents uh, or the things you see on the news occasionally, um, kind of the, the mundane day-to-day -day things that officers encounter. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, but anyways, that's, that's it for the Kenmore specific actions that are in the report. Can I, can I continue to answer Please. a question? Please. Um, 
Yeah, and so in, in addition to Ken more specific actions, there's recommendations that we are giving to King County and also to the state. Um, so uh, at the state level, we, uh, you know, we support the reforms that, that you talked about in your state legislative agenda and we'll be signing on in favor of bills that, that um, advocate for those reforms. Um, also, there's between the mayor and I and others, um, we, we advocate in other ways like through the Association of Washington Cities. Uh, I'm on the um, AWC Legislative Committee and um, I've advocated for uh, pushing for things like um, uh, body cameras and the other reforms. And so the AWC has a bunch of reforms that they're pushing for and they are advocating for body worn cameras. Um, and that, was, that wasn't uh, a, uh, a given at the, with all the different cities. Uh, there was quite a debate about it, but um, a few of us um, really said, hey, body worn cameras are the right way to go. Um, and police want them, most of the public wants them. There are some issues, um, going off on a tangent, but there are some issues with um, immigration and body worn cameras, but I think those can be dealt with. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, and then, oh, also, so on the county level, um, we're also advocating for things, including body-worn cameras. And Chief, can you talk about um, the sheriff's pilot program that they have going on right now with body-worn cameras? I'm kind of putting him on the spot. I didn't ask him to do this before the meeting. But. Yeah, it, it's in process. The The plan was to roll out um, a kind of localized uh, pilot project for the body-worn cameras, um, obviously outfitting a, an agency of 700 plus officers. It's a, a big undertaking. Um, you know, the one-time costs are not, I mean, they're, they're large, but at least they're one-time capital costs. The, the bigger issue is the long-term storage of data, dealing with public disclosure requests, that's where we really run into issue and that's where it becomes expensive and burdensome. Um, so I think the idea is to do this pilot project to kind of get a framework where this large agency as the sheriff's office can um, implement it. So, so it's ongoing. I, I, to my knowledge, it's not been um, implemented yet, but it's certainly still in the works. Yeah, and they, the county sheriff uh, selected a precinct that's kind of a cross section of the county. It has rural, urban, suburban. It's and and so they're trying to get a precinct that where they can kind of see all the possible issues that might arise from it. So, what do you think that that uh, that pilot period, if I remember right, is going to be about a year? Is that right? I believe so. Yeah, and then they'll try to work out the kinks and the bugs, and then hopefully uh, get it out to the rest of the department. One other thing too, Deputy Mayor's, uh, her biggest point is, um, yeah, that I totally agree. We need to be watching the, all this like a hawk this year. Um, so one tool for that is the King County Sheriff um, contract cities, the city managers of all the contract cities, um, per the interlocal agreement, they form a committee and that committee is called the Oversight Committee. And they've been meeting quarterly. And um, each year, one of the city managers volunteers to be the chair. And um, I've never volunteered to be the chair. And I've always felt guilty about it because I've been here for almost nine years. And so finally, they I got roped into being the chair for this year. Kind of good timing though. I mean, if I wanted to be the chair of this oversight committee, I think this was the best year for me to be the chair. Um, and so um, the, this committee uh, definitely um, watches and actually participates very closely in the union negotiations. And the chair of the committee, of the oversight committee actually can sit at the table at the negotiations if he, if he or she chooses to. So, um, we don't get to do the negotiating or anything, but we get to be there and observe it if we want. And the <laughs> county has always done a good job of keeping us closely on for, informed on the negotiations. Um, so I'll, I'll, have, I'll be able to do that. And then 
Um, <clears throat> I've also been telling the committee that we're going to need to meet more than quarterly because that's what we have been meeting is quarterly, but it's probably going to be a monthly meeting if not or as needed. Uh, in fact, we have um, we, we're going to meet. Our next meeting was going to be in March, but I've actually scheduled a meeting for the committee at the on uh, I think it's January twenty second because um, the county council will be looking at what they call the roadmap, and I think I've talked to some of you about this, um, but. Um, at the last Law and Justice Committee meeting of the King County Council in December, um, they talked about what they want to do with Charter Amendments 5 and 6 and what reforms and how the reform process would look like. They didn't, get the, they didn't talk about any specific report, reforms, they talked more about process. And they said that they were going to uh, develop a roadmap for the process. So they were going to design the process for making reforms, including um, who's on first, you know, roles, responsibilities, um, milestones, um, things like that. And so the county executive's office is working on that roadmap. And that roadmap, I'm told, um, but I don't, it could change, but I'm told that uh, that roadmap is going to be presented to the county council here in a couple of weeks. And so the oversight committee is, is all over it. We, we definitely want to be involved. And we, we're hoping that in that roadmap, the contract cities have a prominent role. Um, we don't want to be one of a 17 member advisory committee. Um, we actually want to um, be in the decision making process. I'm not saying we have veto authority or approval authority, but we want to be part of the decision making process. Discussion, questions? Okay, I guess anything else on uh, Karina? Well, I was just going to, to tap in just a little bit on our police reform uh, topic that so we have a, a topic on the agenda that we might be able to plug in a little bit uh, that will also help serve our community. So that would be the safe place program. I just want to do a soft mention. Thank you. Okay, that's next on the list. Mm -hmm. Okay, so safe play, uh, Deborah. Uh, Deputy Mayor Herbig talked about, you know, council um, being informed or kind of keeping abreast of, and I didn't know whether you were thinking one particular person or that someone would brief us, or I, I just wasn't sure what you were thinking because I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would be perfectly content. I'm not perfectly content, but I think. A, like Rob said, there is going to be some place for contract cities to plug in to shaping how Amendment 6, you know, how they, how King County redefines addressing public safety. Um, and I don't know if that'll be, and I've spoken with uh, Council Member Dembowski, and he is, of course, he's got like, um, he has multiple contract cities in his district. He's pushing very hard to make sure that there's a seat at the table for that. I don't know if that'll be a staff seat or a council seat, um, but I, I would just hope that we have regular kind of, you know, especially with the, with the work that Rob's gonna be doing in the oversight committee, I think it makes sense if we have some semi-regular uh, just updates on what's going on and maybe a place to kind of, you know, give a little bit of direction or, or at least some indications as to, you know, if there's specific issues popping up, just a place for us to check in as a council on what policies we might want to be pursuing. There might be other places for us to weigh in too with, you know, I, I don't know yet, a letter to the exec or a letter to the, you know, I, I don't know, but I think that we're at a really interesting crossroads and we have some really interesting opportunities this year that we wouldn't have had in other years um, to kind of make some of the changes that, that folks have been asking for. And in part, it's because these two things are happening at the same time. So I just want to make sure that we're keeping up to speed on what's happening. And when there's an appropriate time for us to weigh in as a council, do that, there might be places for us to weigh in individually. But um, I just want to, you know, as much as we can ensure that uh, we're hearing from, especially Rob, but um, on kind of what's happening. Okay, Rob. Yeah, and, and one thing, uh, just, yeah, we'll definitely, we'll, we'll definitely do that for sure. There, there'll be some <clears throat> little updates I can give in one-on-ones and then 
we can definitely schedule some times for council as well, for council meetings. Um, one thing to, to, that I have to take in consideration as the chair of that committee, um, so there's a spectrum of cities in that group. There's kind of conservative cities that don't want a lot of reform. And then there's other cities like Kenmore Shoreline that are more open to reform ideas. And um, so as the chair of the committee, I've got to, I need to represent the committee, but there's probably gonna be times where I'm gonna say, well, speaking for my city, Da, 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 da. So that's a little bit of a tightrope I've got to walk, but just so you know. Okay, other comments or questions on this? Okay, um, Safe Place Kenmore, um, I know Karina had an interest in that, was ho kind of hoping I think that Brandon might have some thoughts about that. I don't know if that's a bit of a surprise. And I. No, I, I was really hoping that he would lead with that. It's definitely the, the perfect uh, lead in. So thank you. You good with that, Brandon? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, Councilman Frye and I discussed uh, the Safe Place program for a while now, and uh, I understand it's been brought up in the past, and here recently we've uh, kind of discussed more um, uh, kind of re real world application of it and see if it's something that, that we want to move forward with. So um, it's a program that started in Seattle and has been around for a number of years, has um, gained a lot of traction um, nationally. Um, Seattle actually owns a trademark for a safe place and the logo and they allow lots of other agencies to uh, use it and kind of uh, copy the program. And like I said, it's all over the country and east to west coast. So really what it entails um, from my perspective, and I'll let um, Councilmember File talk about more of the, the, the purpose of the program, but from a functional standpoint, um, in what it terms of the, what the police department would do, um, it's a program that the police department would embrace and uh, encourage businesses to become safe places in which um, people, if they're a victim of hate crimes in particular, um, but other crimes as well, those businesses would be open to people coming in and calling 911 and being a safe place, kind of a harbor place where people can come in and safely use the phone and wait for uh, police to respond and contact them. Um, historically, particularly in Seattle, they found that a lot of hate crimes, uh, particularly towards the LGBTQ communities, were not being reported and, and therefore the stats were being underreported and a lot of these incidents were going unnoticed. So this program um, would entail uh, asking businesses if they want to um, be a safe place and place a sticker on their window kind of notifying the public that this is a place where the business would be open to um, allowing a crime victim to come in and use the phone and and have safe harbor until the police arrive. Um, so we've discussed uh, kind of how it would be implemented from the police perspective and uh, kind of the, the costs and how it would all roll out. Um, Councilman Fowle, do you want to jump in further about the kind of history of the program or the purpose? I'll, I'll pop in a little bit on the history of the program. Uh, historically, like um, Officer um, uh, Moen had said, uh, Chief Moen, excuse me, is that it had originally started focused on the LGBTQ community, but uh, it was such a broad program that it was very effective for um, supporting di a wide net diverse community. Mm -hmm. That's why it's, it's so adaptable and accepted across um, uh, now internationally. Um, it's a, a three tier program. So it's a plug and play program, uh, meaning that everything's pretty preformed and there are customizable points, but it's business, um, you know, community schools. Uh, so there's different prongs that can um, exist there. Um, and, you know, really it's important to, to have a, a trackable way of reporting bias hate crimes. And that's something we can really grow off of and uh, grow together with our community. Um, I, I am trying to see, I'm only really seeing out of one eye right now. Um, so there are three different types of hate crimes uh, 
that uh, the police often respond to and report off of in this malicious harassment, which encompasses like verbal and written threats, um, assault, property, uh, property damage, robbery, um, uh, targeted um, intimidation, harassment, uh, bias elements, um, crimes, and bias incidents. They're all three different categories. A person doesn't need to know which one they're, you know, absolutely falling into. That's the, just the duty of the officers. But during the whole process of response, people are treated with dignity and respect um, throughout that process. And the through the history of the program, law enforcement have overseen the initiative um, within our local region um, to address the reporting of anti-LGBT hate crimes, uh, school bullying incidences. Interesting enough, Washington State doesn't have an educational program that teaches the differences between um, being mean, um, bullying, and hate crime within our, our own educational systems. And this is one of those places where um, our law enforcement actually have a place in in part of that instruction with our community and partnership. So it's a really simple program. It's meant to bring the, our community together and really better um, support reporting, tracking of reporting. And when we do that, um, the, the trickle up reporting that goes up to our state and the FBI and trickles back down, it also helps fund directly um, impacting programs here in our own community. So we can really work to better address our own local issues. Um, and there's a decal that's customizable. Um, Chief Moen, do you have a sample of that or? I do. Um, let me see if I can share my screen here. While you're working on sharing your screen, Washington State became a hate-free um, state in 2016 by the order of Governor Jay Inslee. Um, and we are a, a safe program state. So uh, there are several other cities, like the city of Bellevue, Bremington, Centralia, Olympia, Tumwater, Seattle, um, King County Sheriff's Office, has already started working with a program in North Shore School District, almost adopted this program, um, but they needed all the cities to be able to be on board. This is a program that actually died here in Kimmore a few years back. It was the only city where they didn't have the support of the whole council at the time. Okay, uh, so if everybody see the logo, pretty cool. Um, yeah, so there's different variations of it. Um, all, obviously, this says Seattle Police, but there's different uh, taglines of report hate crimes, report student bullying, et cetera. So um, what this program really would entail was just the cost of printing the stickers and uh, engaging the businesses to see if they'd be willing to uh, be a safe place. They sent a contract saying, yes, they would allow someone that wants to report a crime, any crime, uh, to use their phone and wait until police arrive. Um, from a city's perspective, like I said, it'd be the cost of the printing the stickers and the staff time to uh, come up with a web page um, on, the, on the police portion of the, the city website um, where I would detail this program and talk about how to become a member and recruiting businesses and, and have a contact and have contact information. Um, we'd engage the Chamber of Commerce and more Business Alliance and, and, and other community organizations to try to um, get businesses to at least consider being a member of the program. Okay, I'll have you dump that. Um, uh, I'd like to I just address I, the I can't see people. I'd like to address the fit real quickly, how this uh, Safe Place program fits with the city of Kenmore's fit. Um, under our council goals and priorities, we, we foster and create a welcoming, diverse, affirming uh, community, uh, celebrating our culture and fun, um, engaging and educating community growth and development. Uh, we have a resolution number 17-292, uh, reaffirming the city of Kimmore as a safe, inclusive, welcoming city for all people. Uh, we have a pride uh, proclamation, um, 
a DEI resolution recently adopted. And um, again, Washington State uh, did declare a hate-free state zone by Governor Jay Inslee in 2016 and uh, declared Washington State a safe place in 2016. Um, with that, I'll turn it back over. Okay, Nigel and then Melanie. Yeah, I was just gonna reiterate, um, I raised my hand uh, earlier, but I was just gonna say what uh, Councilmember File uh, pointed out. Um, you know, this was something that was at one point brought to us by the school district as a fairly non-controversial thing, but um, a couple of our members at the time um, frankly raised quite a stink, uh, especially over the use of the uh, of the rainbow on the sticker. And over my objections, this this whole thing went away, um, probably, this is probably five, four or five years ago. So I'm glad the Council Member Files bring this back. I think it's a great program and I hope we can move forward with it. Okay, Melanie. Yes, I want to thank Council Member File for bringing this forward. I believe she's been talking it since she was running for office. Um, so I'm thankful to see it before us. I believe it's a straightforward win for our council, for our city, and let's do it. You know, I, 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 I would really be surprised if anyone was against this. I think this is Let's start putting some thumbs up and move forward with it. Thank you. Additional conversation? Rob? Yeah, this is great. And it'll send a, a pretty powerful message about us being a welcoming, inclusive um, community. Um, is this violating our rule about if you add something, something needs to come off? Perhaps. Well, I had a question about that. Uh, I was thinking about that for you. And the reason I was is I had a client who in Olympia, who is a participant in this. It's a great, great program and all of that. Uh, however, there were some uh, to do's around it. And maybe Brandon can speak to this a little bit further. And I know this because of the, I watched that experience. In particular, the necessity for training and providing some skill sets for the various businesses because the way this works is people come in the door and say, or a lot of times, or they can call, I suppose, but, but, but typically, at least the net with my client, they came in the door. And, and, and in a couple of occasions, they came in the door with people in hot pursuit. Domestic violence, people would, was being played out. And there's some other kinds of activities. So there was the need for, at least, my client felt and, and, and subsequently was provided with some training and some consideration about well, what, what, what do we actually do when, when you know, we, we're being asked to be a safe place in real time for somebody. So maybe, so that might have, from my perspective at least, experienced some impact on somebody to, to, to provide that or what have you. Yeah, and, and the nice thing is, I'm sorry, you weren't recognizing me, am I okay to go? That's fine. No, that'd be good. Okay. I'm just used to jumping right in. Uh, nice thing is this program has been rolled out for so long that a, a lot of that's already in place. Um, there's materials that I've already gotten from SPD uh, about it's flyers they give out to the businesses with information about what their employees are supposed to do and um, flyers they actually give to each individual employee it says, okay, hey, here's here. We're now part of this program. These are the expectations. Um, here's what to do. Here's not what not to do and kind of um, lays that out. So uh, luckily um, we're a smaller city with not a ton of businesses. So I, I think that um, between those flyers and maybe some one-on-one -on -one time with the businesses that do sign up, I, I don't think it will be um, a huge, huge problem to um, provide some training if, if need be. Other, uh, Karina. So, um, you know, other cities have rolled out this program and connected with libraries. Um, Starbucks is a very large participant of the program. I know the business owner 192 in the past has said they would like to be a safe place um, participant. And um, this is something that's really doable. Most notably, King County Sheriff's Office has already started into this program. So. And they take on a deeper level of training than that's required by the program itself, uh, which is just so impressive and uh, something I really want to commend the sheriff's office on. Uh, so for that is great. Um, recommendations, um, we you know adopt a safe place program, encourage our businesses and school partners to raise awareness and maybe have a 
um, website page, landing page. That's usually um, a plug and play kind of thing. Um, the We could consider a resolution or proclamation update and declare the city of Camora a safe place city in a hate-free zone. Uh, I would like to see that happen. I think that would be pretty amazing, especially in today's you know climate. Um, so I don't want to leave Rob's question, though, and I want to ask Rob if he has a, a view of this in terms of having a, a pretty or, or an impact on resources and so on, because our standard in the past as we head towards midday, hopefully when we do goals, is that if, if we start to, that, that if, if we're going to, it's a great idea if people want to do it, um, but if it has some significant impact on resources, and I'm certainly not saying it does, so don't misunderstand me, it has to kind of stand the, kind of has to take the route of getting in the goal list or, or some way to accommodate the resource demand. So I'd turn to you, Rob, and just say, do you have a, what's your sense of that, I guess, or? Yeah, um, I definitely want to be sensitive to that and respectful of my coworkers' time and everything. Um, but talking to Chief, like, like Council Member File said, this is pretty plug and play and to stand it up is not gonna be a bunch of work. Uh, we, we're gonna have to do some website work and get the stickers and you know, send out the message to the businesses. I'm, I'm assuming we're not gonna be expected to go door to door and contact all the businesses. Okay, yeah, so um, I think the work is pretty minimal in getting it up and then it's probably minimal in keeping it going um, and I, Chief and I have had this conversation and I think he's okay with that. But if, if I can just say one thing, I'm, I'm very protective of my chief of police's time. So um, we're a very thin police department with very little overhead. And we have one sergeant, our chief, supervising 13 other officers. That's a, that's a pretty low ratio. Um, a sergeant to officer ratio. I'm used to, and and Mike, Michael, you you you're familiar with law enforcement. It's isn't it normally more like one to six, one to seven, something like that. Depends on the unit. Yeah. So if you're patrol, it's one thing. Sometimes it kind of depends, but that's a really um, that's a lot of people to supervise. If yeah. anybody. So so the ability to deliver meaningful supervision is definitely challenged, and and I don't have to. Brandon could probably speak at length yeah. to that, but uh, no, you're, you're, you're quite right. That's And so that's my point is he's already stretched thin as it is. And even be, before Chief Mullen, we've always had, I'm not always, but we've had a problem with the officer being, with the chief of police being able to do everything he's supposed to do, just running a police department, just running the operations of the police department. And he, it's, some of his best time can be spent mentoring and teaching and training his cops and being out there with them. Uh, but then there's all the other administrative stuff that we just don't see, all the, the scheduling issues and training and all that stuff. And it, it, that right there, just running the basic operations of our small little police department is, is a full-time job, takes the chief's entire time. And so if we want our chief to be spending more and more time on community programs, which isn't a bad thing, but if we want our chief to be spending more and more time on that, then we're probably gonna to have to talk about additional resources. But for now, the, we, we can squeeze this one in, but I don't want you to think, oh, we squeezed that one in, so let's squeeze in five more. <laughs> so, um, and some, off, so, some departments have um, what they call crime prevention specialists, so probably in this day, day and age, a better term might be community-oriented policing specialist you know, where you bring in a civilian to come in and run all those programs. Um, I, I had that in my last two cities, we had a civilian running all these programs. Um, so I'll stop. Okay. Any more discussion before I try to sum it up in terms of what I think I'm hearing, Karina? I was just gonna add, I know Chief Mullen really runs his ship and he does a lot of work where um, most uh, offices would have an administrative uh, assistant, uh, um, possibly even a, uh, a student intern who's you know 
he, studying law enforcement. Um, so he is short staffed completely. I, I do believe that um, the lives of his uh, program and department would be enhanced if he even had a part-time employee um, enhancement or a, an intern, some way we can support him uh, in that, because that also does bring in um, additional people down the road. But again, here we're really fortunate. We have um, Kenmore um, Police Department and the city of Kenmore is contracted with the King County Sheriff's Office. And they already started into uh, adopting this program earlier this year. Pandemic took over, a number of things happened. So I know that they're in the midst of a process, um, but with, with that, they'd have a, a good response. So I, I trust and have good faith in them. Okay, um, and listening to the conversation, I'm hearing two things that are important. One, there seems to be, and check me folks if I'm wrong, but a consensus, this is a good program and, and you'd like to go forward with it. And the second thing I'm hearing, Chief, is that this is doable without breaking the bank and, or, and your back. Um, so uh, if that's the case, the third point I'd like to make is though, that there has been a uh, sort of a standard at retreats that these kind of decisions get codified in formal session. I don't know if this rises to that level or not, but you've tried to formalize a decision like this that you make at the retreat at a council meeting or what have you. Is that still in play here? David. Yeah, I mean, normally it would be, but I think this program um, is, is easy enough but I could be wrong. Um, maybe it does need to go through the process, but I, for one, believe that we should just implement it because it's such an easy program and the city manager has also already expressed his support and so has the police chief saying that it won't be too much of a problem. So uh, I'm in favor of just moving that Doing forward. It. Joe? I'm definitely all in favor of it and but I strongly recommend, of course, that we review with our city attorney in terms of any action you can take at retreat, whether or not it has to be then ratified later at a public meeting. That's all. We've got to make sure it's a great program. We want to make sure it's done right. Okay. Rob? you got to remember, this is a public meeting. Okay. Yeah, Rob, it, it's it's your, it, it, your retreats, what you do is you come up with informal agreements that then we, that then you um, vote on on consent at a later meeting. Um, but uh, I really like council member files idea to come out, come forward with a proclamation and that can make it more official. Will we be able to see a, a customized logo for a Kimmore sticker? Because I think we could have some fun with that. <laughs> okay. Melanie? Um, I was just going to say exactly what Rob said. I, I, I really like council member files idea for a proclamation for um, safe places and hate free zone in Kenmore. Um, so we could do this all, and I think it's very. It would be really nice to have it on the agenda for this for our community to see that we're taking a formal action on this, in addition to what we've discussed here today. But I'm so thankful to see we're all on board. This has been a great. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Yeah, I mean, I think this is this is yet another kind of plank in the DEI work, and so could be articulated. I mean, I'm fine with its, I guess, with a standalone proclamation, but um, I, I also see it as part of that larger framework. Okay, great. Any other comments? I'd just like to wrap it up with a bow. I really want to thank uh, our, our partners, uh, both the uh, Kimmore um, Police Chief uh, for you know, doing a little added research on this and looking into it a little further. Uh, Equal Rights Washington for their support and um, the North Shore Council PTSA for their past work on this issue. Um, and really uh, a retired officer, um, James Ritter, who worked really hard. Uh, we all worked really hard together uh, with a, a potential two county, seven jurisdiction rollout uh, for North Shore School District. And um, it's just really nice to see Kimmore on board and the potential for our, our schools later to be better supported. So I'm really proud of 
our council today, and I'm, I'm really happy for the future of Kimmore and, and what this program could do for, for being there for others. So thank you. Okay, great. Okay, to wrap on this one, anything else in public safety area before we let Brandon go? Okay, thank you, Brandon, so much for, for being here. Um, food trucks, that would be Deborah. Yeah, actually I have the next three and I'll try to be very succinct. Um, so food trucks have been on the agenda for a few years. Um, the idea is just sort of to have, you know, food truck fun, basically, you know, maybe a couple of food trucks that's you know that the city brings in i know the food trucks are suffering of course our restaurants are suffering right at the moment too so it's a little bit delicate um but if um you know if we uh i i don't want to compete with restaurants that are necessarily struggling so you know if if seaplane kind of comes back in some way we may want to rethink this but at the moment i was thinking we've talked about bringing them in on a weeknight which is when there'd be more, uh, of course, now everybody's at home, so I guess it doesn't matter, but um, a weeknight when people uh, might be more amenable rather than the, you know, middle of the day. Um, and, uh, you know, or it could be simply advertising what, you know, I don't know if Karen Brewing is still uh, bringing in the food trucks, but, you know, it could be kind of advertising what's already happening um, and putting it in kind of a, you know, food truck fun framework of, you know, a Wednesday or Thursday night or something like that and having it be more regular. Um, so that was, that was the idea, maybe somewhere close to city hall where there's, you know, room for a couple of trucks. Um, but again, I don't want to compete with what Karen is doing. Uh, we want to support what they're doing. So maybe whatever night they, I don't know if they have multiple nights, but you know, we again, co-advertise maybe that, so those are those are a couple options, either doing it on our own or co-advertising or, yeah. So okay. discussion, uh, Nigel. Yeah, I think Karen is hosting every day, uh, pretty much. It's just a regular rotating schedule. Um, and they're also, um, I'm not sure if people know, but there are some new, uh, at least one new um, food trailer over by the gas station in front of the bowling alley, um, related to a restaurant down in Kirkland. Um, I mean, yeah, I think bringing in variety is good, but I, I do, I, previously we, we would have parked this right in front of, uh, and we had done this right by the town square. And now that would be in direct competition with uh, a new local business. So that it is kind of a concern, but um, people love food trucks. I mean, and you know, it, pe people love them and they do. Well, I would say they build community, but now we're all staying six feet away and wearing masks. So maybe not as much as in the past. I like the idea. Okay. Melanie. I fully support the idea and I think more is more and if we have food trucks we're going to be bringing in more revenue to the city more opportunity for our community members to get out and buy food right now I don't even know where I can eat you know it's really hard I'd like to see some food trucks you know they're they're visible easily accessible it's clear they're outside like I sit in my my house and I go do I have to I wonder how if I did get takeout you know is there an outdoor area to sit you know I think too much when I eat out right now so which I don't do very often. So I love the idea. And you know what? The funny thing is places that are booming have more restaurants, right? Like, so when we look at downtown Ballard, downtown Ballard doesn't worry about another restaurant being competition for their next door neighbor because they're like, there's another place, there's another draw, there's more. So I say more is more and let's go for it. Thank you. Deborah, did you have your hand up again? Well, I mean, uh, you know, this is a perfect sure. example. I didn't even know that Karen was doing it every day and that there was one at the bowling alley. So I, you know, I know that the we have to be careful about, you know, promoting specific businesses. Um, so I wonder if there is a way to um, promote um, what is already happening more generically. I, I look to staff to maybe figure out a way to um, to do that um, uh, in a, in a way that we we can <laughs> you know without uh, you know targeting specific businesses I don't, I don't know food truck calendar or you know just um, yeah okay um, on that uh, David and then I want to go to Rob on um, 
in terms of there was staff was mentioned so i'd like him to have a chance to comment on that david one thing we need to be careful of is that ichiban and toshis are there right in the neighborhood and they're open and they do takeouts and I really don't want to affect a business that is already struggling by throwing more competition at them. So, I mean, food trucks are a great idea. I love food trucks. I go to them every chance I get, but um, we have to be aware of what we're doing. Okay. Rob? Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been definitely soliciting food trucks for a lot of years now, and sometimes we've been able to get them and Sometimes we haven't, and we took a break this year because of the pandemic. Um, but uh, they can be a little bit uh, picky on where they want to go. Um, they're a little bit nervous about coming to an untested market sometimes. And in, and sometimes um, they've actually wanted us to guarantee their revenue. Like, okay, we'll come and set up a food truck for you, but if we don't make so much money, we want you to make up the difference. I don't think you're wanting us to do that, right? I, I, sorry, <laughs> I, I guess what I'm trying to say is not, I mean, I think it's clear to me very quickly that we don't need to go after more food trucks um, necessarily. I mean, maybe we could, but we've got a lot of struggling restaurants. We've got a lot of struggling food trucks. Let's get the word out about what's already here as a, as a start. And oh. that's what I'm, I, yeah. Melanie. Okay. Oh, you're muted. Sorry, I thought I unmuted. Um, I, I do want to draw attention to, I, I, I want to be respectful to the concerns of our struggling businesses. I like the idea of maybe Friday food truck night or whatever night we want to call it, but promoting some, if we are able, if we are able to. Here's what I, I, I've seen in the past, or what, I, what I, I, I've seen in local communities, not related directly to food trucks. When there is something that can draw the community to a space, it drives revenue. Mm -hmm. So food trucks in an area where there's food will support the businesses in the area, especially if we can promote it for our community to know that it's accessible. One of the things about the food trucks is we can see them. So it's I I I, I think there there is account there's an alternate view that possibly if we have more we're going to be stimulating the economy for our small businesses just just something to mull and consider i'm open to whatever our council wants to do but i just want to put that that mindset forward okay nigel and generally i would agree with what council member okane just said um, i think it plays a little bit differently during a pandemic than it does uh, when people can actually gather in larger groups and kind of build that sort of excitement. Um, you know, now when I order from a place, you know, it's people standing in line six feet apart and grabbing their stuff and leaving. Um, and so I think that's a different dynamic than, than what you have elsewhere. And frankly, you know, comparing us to Ballard is kind of apples and oranges. Uh, they just on a density level are so much, um, they have the density to support all those businesses whereas we had to struggle just to have the density to support you know one or two new restaurants uh in kenmore um but i do like the idea of what council member shrebnik was talking about earlier um you know we could do a little bit of work around getting information out about the local restaurants that are still doing takeout still doing delivery um i know some other cities have done some similar information. Nancy's raising her hand. Maybe it's usually working on something like that. Um, but I've seen that with other cities. I know Kirkland did something and I think probably Shoreline has done something um, as a way to just kind of advertise all the local businesses that are that are doing work and to try to make it easier for folks to access um, or at least know who's doing what and being able to access a, a, a good meal from Kenmore. Good idea. Melanie and then Nancy. Yeah, um, I, I, I appreciate that perspective. I, I also do think that, um, you know, I, I, was, I, I was about to pull back my, my, my comment, but I, I, I tend to be a little bit more optimistic about um, providing choice because I just, we do, I'm, I'm glad that I like the approach of supporting our businesses and making them visible that they're open. And so I think that is incredibly important. And I think we can do there's an opportunity for both 
genuinely, I genuinely believe there's an opportunity for both as a resident, not as a council member. I don't know where to eat. So I'm, 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 I like this idea. I also know like at a festival, people will drive by and go, oh wow, there's something happening here. It's happening again. Oh, one, you know, oh, it's always the same day because there's the stuff that we promote and then there's the stuff that we see with our eyes. And if we have a food truck row once a week in the Cairn um, 192 area, it's going to drive people to those areas and it will stimulate those businesses. You know, someone will come in and buy a, what are those things called? Those big things of beer that they buy there, you know? <laughs> um, but I forgot. Good. The name of it, they but, call them good. Uh, what? <laughs> they call them good. That's yeah. Good. Okay. Growlers. Like, growlers. Uh, growlers. Growlers. Growl. That's yeah. the word I was looking for. Yeah. So, the, you know, it's like, I'll, I'll, you know, there's an additional food truck. There's, there are more choices. Maybe someone doesn't want Mexican. They want Vietnamese or whatever it is. But I just, I just want to share that I love the food truck idea, no matter where we go for it. I think we need to support our local businesses, make it visible they're open. I think there are things that we can do that are maybe weekly opportunities. I think that food trucks would be more open if we, if they knew we were fully open to coming to Kenmore, if there was a promo night, but maybe not, because I think we've already explored that. But in COVID, I have just the slightly opposite. There's more need for food trucks right now for our community that's my i'm i'm on that i'm on i'm from that perspective because i'm always looking for food <laughs> and I, you know, anyway i'll let you guys go on that thank you okay. nancy hey good morning i just wanted to um number one you know support the interest in supporting our our local businesses and in particularly restaurants for several months now um every friday uh the seattle times friday magazine has a whole a list of, of uh, restaurants offering takeout and, and delivery uh, you know, throughout uh, King County. And so we've been on that list. And so every, every single Friday, uh, that, would, that would be available. There's no reason why we can't amplify that through our social media and, and uh, other avenues. And so we'll We'll certainly look into doing that, but I just wanted to make you all aware that that uh, and and uh, our uh, former uh, media relations consultants uh, helped us kind of you know make our way onto that list. And so Kenmore is is uh, has a robust presence on that on that list. And uh, so I think just about every every restaurant in town is listed there. Any other comments on this one? So what I'm, Deborah. Uh, yeah, if we if we could amplify that, my recollection from that is that you have to like search for Kenmore. And I mean, it'd be just nice to have a simple list of, you know, Kenmore restaurants that are doing, uh, you know, takeout and the food trucks. Um, Cause I know the food trucks were not on there, so. <laughs> I do. Actually, they were. Uh, Karen is listed there with with food trucks. Does uh, the Bothell Kenmore Chamber are they doing anything that we might be able to piggyback off of as far as promoting Kenmore restaurants? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Okay. Go. Did Rob get his question answered about whether we subsidize these? My idea would be to only subsidize them for special events. Rob, yep. are you asking if that, or were you saying? Um, I, yeah, I was, but I think I got an answer. I, yeah, the idea is not to subsidize them um, unless we're, you know, gonna have them at a special event, yeah. And we do tend to subsidize at special events, I believe. Um, but hey, uh, there's one more food trick truck that's awesome that we have in Kenmore. And it's the one at the Chevron at 80th and Bopple Way. Oh, yeah. yeah, they they have the most amazing burrito. Oh, <laughs> that one's been there for years. It's really good. Yeah. Okay, so I'm hearing support. I'm hearing you kind of go within your existing resource profile to promote and, and get food trucks. I'm not hearing a a or an interest in a major initiative to do that, but to do that somewhat within your existing resource profile and, and uh, things that you have available to do that. Is that fair to say? Okay. 
Um, arts and Human Services, Deborah. Yeah, I'm not sure how arts got on here, but um, maybe arts was just a question of how AOK -okay is doing, but I do get their newsletters, so I'm not sure we need an update on that. But it was uh, Human Services last year. Um, we talked a little bit about, mostly Councilmember File and I talked a little bit about Human Services and the lack of uh, clarity around what's available in our local community, and uh, we don't have staff bandwidth to put that together. But I put that on my kind of to-do list for this coming year because um, I didn't last year <laughs> uh, to maybe work with Council Member File on researching what's available, and uh, you know, with with the understanding that that might lead to advocacy if we discover gaps. Okay. Conversation, Karina. I think that sounds great, uh, Council Member Shrebnik, and uh, I think that would be great for Kim Moore. Um, one thing I that pops off the top of my my head, and I, I've said it yesterday uh, a couple times, is that we could become a a, a contracted city with a workforce a program, and uh, if we do so, that. It, that connects human services on multi-tier levels with multi-agencies and expands um, uh, rental uh, agreements, which uh, not not necessarily rental agreements, but uh, what is considered income for for people and needing housing. Are they students? Are they re-entering the workforce and going through training, whatever, that kind of thing? Um, their, their student income does, does count as income. Okay, David and then Nigel. Um, Mr. City Manager, aren't we already participating in that program um, where we provide uh, opportunities through the workforce, uh, through that school, the school system, our, are two students that are there every day when normally we're open. Yeah, I've already forgotten what it's called. Uh, yeah. The pandemic does to you because um, we haven't used them this this last year. Um, because but, City Hall is not open. Yeah. Um, well, I believe we're talking about two very different things uh, because I'm very aware of the uh, adult transition program. My, my oldest son was part of that program. Um, as a, a person with uh, uh, cognitive uh, functioning disabilities. Uh, but uh, it's different the way that the uh, human services program uh, connects with uh, multi-tier programs through DSHS and um, over, Overwatch, Oversight, um, and contracting. Uh, it's, it connects uh, on multi-tiers um, Kirkland, for example, is a, a workforce city, and uh, we could look to their um, example because they are a leading example on on that specific uh, program adoption. And it's plug and play. Uh, it just once you once you adopt it, is the, the services are connected. People know how to connect to the services, but certain kinds of housing discrimination also can't occur within your, your city. Okay, Nigel? Yeah, I've been frantically Googling around for workforce city, Kirkland, and I'm not finding anything. So I would like to, if Council Member File could maybe send around some links about this, that would be helpful because I'm having trouble finding the program that she's describing. I'd like to read up more about it. Okay, Deborah. Yeah, I mean, I, this was not meant to be a big discussion. It was more just like, is it okay if council member file and I work on this? Um, so yeah, okay. <laughs> well, to, to wrap that up with a bow, can do you mind a council if uh, we form a small ad hoc committee so that we can uh, do the work and come back with a recommendation or a set of recommendations? Melanie, okay. There's two yeses. I think Baker's asking a question. David? Yeah, um, we tend, this council has tended not to have ad hoc committees. If a group of three or less council members want to get together, there's certainly no problem with that. Um, 
So I'm not sure about forming formal committees because yeah, I don't know there's never been a, a committee council. Really? I would prefer this to be less formal, but I do support council member file and Shrevenick moving forward on this. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Okay, any other comments on this? I'm hearing go forth and do well and come back to the council on that. Yeah, okay. thanks. I, I don't want it to be some formal big deal. Um, okay, um, love, love notes. notes catalog actually I think was the word that I was thinking about and I talked to Rob about this so this is almost like a non-issue but it was more the idea that on the website we would you know in the where's the fun have a kind of a catalog of love notes um, that have happened and pictures and you know have have that be a piece of the where's the fun and I, I think um, I'll let Rob speak to it but I think he maybe already thinking along those lines so Rob yeah um Nancy and I um, talked to Lauren Homiak, our communications specialist, about this just the other day, and she said she's already working on it. So, cool. There you go. You're mind melding each other. Okay. Anything else on this? All right. Joe. Just, oh, excuse me. Oh, did anyone have a question? I had my hand raised. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I missed you. My fault. Um, I just had a question. This is quick. Um, in addition to the catalog, is there a submitted love note button too going with that? Um, uh, yeah, we, we definitely want to encourage, that's the whole idea of the catalog is to encourage people to do their own love notes. Um, the, one of the main messages I want to send to the community when it comes to love notes is they do not need our permission, not that they ever needed it in the first place. Um, so I don't want them to feel like they have to submit an application for a, a love note. Um, but yeah, we definitely want to encourage people and we'll also let people know how we will support them, which you guys know, right? We'll, um, if it meets our city goals and stuff, uh, we'll, and if it's not like religious or political, we'll, um, we'll um, provide the venue and we'll promote it through our normal channels. Well, cool. Okay. All right. St. Edwards, Joe. Yeah, I wanted to ask Rob to uh, confirm for us now the estimate as to when the lodge was going to open. And then the reason I put this on there was mainly because of a hearing examiner decision that was made about four or five years ago. And there were a number of requirements that were to be looked into once the lodge was up and running. So it's to get on a radar screen if this is uh, to open this year. And I remember one uh, specifically required council briefing and uh, I remember that um, Nigel specifically uh, asked and the rest of the council, I think, assented to an update on traffic impacts as one of the items. That, and so that update was to be brought to the council. So I just wanted to get down the staff radar screen. Rob? Yeah, Nancy Asley, do you want to jump in on this? Sure. Um, Mayor and council, um, the opening for the lodge is scheduled for May of this year. Um, and uh, thanks for mentioning those items from uh, the hearing examiner, Council Member Marshall will we'll, uh, follow up on that and, and uh, get, with the, um, get with the Daniels group on that as, and get something on the council agenda for an update. Uh, one one thing that you may be interested in, in knowing is that uh, when the lodge opens, their uh, their intent is to feature local products in their gift shop, and so they will. Uh, the the lodge has already reached out to me to to uh, you know ask for ideas of different local products. Uh, and when I when I hear local, I I say Kenmore, you know. Kenmore uh, produced products. So uh, that's that's nice to know. So I, I think they're gonna be a great partner and obviously a, a huge um, asset for the for the community. Really looking forward to that. Deborah? 
That's really interesting. <laughs> um, I wonder, oh boy, and I'm blocking on her name. Oh, this is awful. Rob will remember. The gal that was so, oh, it's terrible that I can't remember her name, that was a love note person who was so interested in the maker space. Oh, um, yeah. Who's in? Pardon? Zan, um, yes. Sing. Sing. Yes. Um, anyway, I, I mean, she is well connected to folks that are making stuff. Yeah. 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 Thanks for mentioning that. Okay. Mallory. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Joe, any more, you need any more information on this? Rob, Rob. Yeah, if, um, Michael, if you could just put as an agreement from this, uh, retreat, that will will we we will be uh, reporting back to you on the hearing examiner requirements at a future council meeting. Okay, and I know Anastasia is picking up on this right now, but I'll make my note and we'll we'll coordinate. You bet. Anything anything else, Joe? Okay, very good. Um, Parks and School Partnership Ball Fields. I want to say Karina, but I'm not sure. I can check real quick, but anyone. I didn't add this item back on the list this year, although I did bring it up last year. Um, I do know that we, we had meetings uh, with North Shore, but uh, before I continue on, someone did put this item on, so I wouldn't want to overspeak anybody. And actually, I, I don't think I put it on either, but I, I seem to think that um, Rob uh, got it done. But I, doesn't this go to um, our renewing or the staff recommendations on ball fields for Kenmore? I think that's what we're looking for here. Uh, just given the full workload you've given us all, I, I recommend that we do three things on ball fields. One is pursue lighting at Moreland's as you have adopted in your CIP. Number two, extend the lease with Bastyr University. And number three, um, if we do Lake Point revisioning, think about ball fields there as a possibility. Okay. Seeing some thumbs up. Any more on this? All righty. Um, COVID-19 distribution of state funds. Did, did we already cover this when we talked about COVID yesterday? I, I think that was Joe's and we may have already covered it. I feel like we did, but if you want more info, we can. Okay, uh, Nancy? Uh, I, I think we did cover quite a bit of the the uh, local distribution of of state and and county funding, uh, but I did come up with a couple of other uh, factoids that I thought you might be interested to know. Uh, when I said that uh, we had a lot of applications for those those grants that came through King County, uh, actually we had eighty nine applications that were were submitted and you might recall that we were able to fund 18 businesses so the the need is much much greater uh, than than we've had the resources to to um, provide uh, you might also be aware that uh, the the uh, governor's office and state department of commerce where i used to work um, and announced um, a few weeks ago, a third round of Working Washington grants. And um, those, uh, those decisions have been made, but do you know how many businesses around the state applied for those? 28,000, 28,000. And uh, the grants uh, are going to just under 8,000 businesses statewide. So, mm -hmm. um, Again, uh, I, I saw in the paper this morning that that uh, uh, banks throughout the country are, uh, are ready to to accept PPP loan uh, applications uh, coming up. But 
um, you know, we just don't know what's, what is in store for us as far as other grant opportunities that we might be able to help distribute. Okay. I'll keep you posted on that. Great, thanks for the update. Next item, remote public comment in parens, when we begin in person again, and I'm looking, I don't see that on, but okay, Nigel, thank you. Yeah, um, I just wanted to <clears throat> bring this up as something to discuss. Uh, one of the, I think one of the only pluses <clears throat> of these remote meetings uh, has been the additional, um, the ability uh, for it, the greater ease that the public has had in participation. Uh, getting folks to come down to City Hall at seven o'clock on a Monday is difficult for a lot of folks. Um, that's why I pushed for, you know, us to install a camera to live stream years ago. Um, and the only bonus I've really seen other than, um, other than a shorter commute uh, to these Zoom meetings has been that we've had more public comment. It's been easier for folks to weigh in. I think that's valuable. Um, and I would ask that we direct staff to work between now and whenever we get back together in person uh, to somehow figure out how we can continue to do remote um, public comment for folks who don't, who don't or can't make it to a city council meeting um, at our meetings once we're back in person. I think it's a valuable uh, tool. I think it's one that we should continue using. Um, so I want to toss that out, see what people think, and um, hopefully direct staff to continue to figure that out between now and whenever we're back. Okay, discussion. Molly. Um, I, I support continuing remote co public comment. I would like to share that as we move forward with it, I hope that we can encourage people to come in person if they can. But I really think that this um, remote access to public comment is beneficial to our council. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Karina? I, well, I'll just... I, I, uh, I just you can one one kind of downside in my opinion is that you get people from San Francisco and Alaska weighing in on your meetings, but I'm just I'll just throw that out. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, uh, Karina, David, and Nigel. Thank you. I absolutely support this uh, this idea, Deputy Mayor Herbig and Councilmember O'Kane. Uh, I think it's really important that uh, we, we grow opportunities to decrease uh, uh, opportunity barriers uh, and gaps. We want to build a bridge, right? Um, it's easier for you know, young people uh, or families with little kids or uh, elderly populations or less mobile individuals to have greater potential to accessing their local government. And so I applaud that and absolutely support this one wholeheartedly. So thank you. Okay. David, then Nigel. Yeah, I, th I think we have in our council rules, the abilities to um, have uh, the conversation, the, the public comment at the beginning, and if necessary, continue it to the end. Uh, one of the things that we have had is uh, uh, three hours worth of public comments. And I do appreciate the public uh, public's input. We need it, but we also need to uh, get on with the business of the council. And so I want to make sure that when it comes time for doing the business items, that we're not all half asleep because we've had three or four hours of public comment. So uh, I, I think we need to use the rules that we have to uh, help us out with that. But I definitely support the idea to continue with uh, using uh, some video technique so people can, can speak up at home. Okay, Nigel, Karina, and Anastasia. Yeah, and uh, you know, I would I would say that um, yeah, I was concerned when we when we had the the opportunity the um, time when we had folks from all over the country coming in on that one issue, that was way out of. I mean, as we've seen in the last six months since that issue, that hasn't been the case. Um, it's frankly a lot of the same folks um, who come in person, um, but it has opened up to some new folks to come and talk to us. They all seem to mostly be Kenmore residents. Um, 
you know, uh, the last couple months, our meetings have not been going super late due to public comment. Um, if we need to adjust things at some point and add a time limit um, that can get waived by a majority of the council or something like that, we could do that. But, uh, you know, those, the times when we had three hours of public comment are times when we had tragedies in the community. Um, you know, and that was six years ago. I can't think of anything in the last six years where we've had anything um, remotely like that. And I don't see us, I don't see that happening again unless something of the same sort of magnitude happens. Um, Karina and Anastasia and then Deborah. Uh, you know, uh, one thing we could uh, consider doing is have a dedicated comment period at times you know, allocated. And if there is a packed house, then um, three minutes, we might have to decrease the time um, and, and ask people if they are willing to, you know, instead of have all of the family comment, you know, maybe have one or two members of the family comment. Uh, it's not uncommon. It's done in other cities. It's done in, in school. Um, board meetings and it's done in Olympia, we can do it too. Okay, Anastasia, then Deborah. Sure, good morning, um, council. So I have, a, I have a couple of thoughts on this. Um, one thing that we need to talk about is that, as I understand it, the city hall, um, the, t the technology, the framework, whatever system you were using was gravely outdated and very buggy. So we're actually, literally in the middle of doing some AV upgrades. So what that means for us is already we there's going to be a pretty steep learning curve for all of us to learn how to work with the new system and get it to sort of a standard that provides for really efficient meetings. And uh, I my um, my hope is that that would be our primary goal is to get sort of standardized before we optimize that we become familiar with what the new system is like. My worry is that um, if we try to integrate and do too many things at once and try to take on some sort of hybrid, um, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna give ourselves a bit of a headache. Part of the reason why I say that is because virtual recorded streaming that later gets uploaded to YouTube or in real time gets uploaded to YouTube would now be competing with Zoom video streaming. And I have no idea how and if that would work. So these are just sort of popcorn style thoughts in my mind. Um, but I I actually think that this is exactly the direction that we should be going. Um, it makes a lot of sense and I think we can do it. I just want us to be really realistic about the timeline. We have to, like I said, standardize before we optimize, make sure our meet, we're back in, our meetings are efficient with the new technology, we work out the kinks together, and then we sort of add layers to this plan. And frankly, we're a smaller city. Sometimes I edge on the um, side, uh, a side of, um, if there are bigger cities that have figured this out, Let's see how they're doing it. Let's see how they vetted it. Let's see how the public records are playing into this and the storage of the additional Zoom links or meetings or whatever is being dealt with, the public records. All these things get vetted out um, and maybe we can sort of capitalize on some of that work. But um, I just want us to give ourselves enough space to do this right before we add new layers. Great, Deborah and then Nigel, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that, that, those pieces of information. I, as long as we are consistently signaling that we want to continue the um, online ability to provide input, I really have appreciated the, <clears throat> the added mechanism for people to have input. Um, I think it's really benefited us. And um, yeah, we had a couple meetings that ran a little bit long and had, you know, maybe a couple people that weren't Kenmore residents. And I think we have one or two maybe regular contributors that aren't Kenmore residents. That doesn't bother me. If they care enough about the issues that are happening in Kenmore to want to <laughs> contribute, I, I, it's, I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess I don't have a problem with that. Um, so I, yeah, so I'm very in favor of uh, continuing. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Okay. Nigel. Uh, so a couple of thoughts. One, um, I know there are some cities right now that, are, that um, require signing folks to sign up for public comment. 
uh, via a web form before uh, the council meeting. Um, and that is something we could do uh, to make it a little bit more streamlined um, and make it a little bit easier to, to know who you're calling on and what order, that sort of thing. Two, um, I would be completely fine if remote participation is, is audio only, if that's easier somehow to set up. We don't necessarily need to be, um, we don't necessarily, once we're back in person, we don't necessarily have to be married to Zoom. Uh, there might be other ways to get folks participating remotely that that isn't Zoom and isn't necessarily on video. And three, um, we could also restructure how we do public comment a little bit if we need to, if we're concerned about the amount of public comment. Um, a lot of other cities do two public comment periods. They do one at the beginning for things that are on the agenda, and then they might do one at the end for things that are not on the agenda so that you can hear the stuff that's pertinent to today's meeting before you make your decisions. And then everything that's kind of secondary or you know not to the point of exactly what we're dealing with today can be put off to the end um, to hear from folks on, on, on those issues. I'm not saying that we need to go that direction, but I'm just saying there are other ways we could structure public comment to deal with um, if we're concerned, not concerned, but if we're, well, if we're concerned about the extra time that additional public comment may add to our meetings. Okay, great, Melanie? Yes, and I wanted to tag on to what Councilmember Shrevenick said about people outside of the city of Kenmore and public comment. We are at the north end of Lake Washington and at the mouth of the Sammamish Slough. We have a regional responsibility for our waterways that impact people beyond the city of Kenmore. We have other issues that come up along those lines. I would say clean air is one of them as well. So it's incredibly important that we have an open door to public comment because people beyond the city of Kenmore are impacted and we are trying to lead the way in restoration. And we're going to need people to know they can, they need to know what's going on here and know that they are welcome and that we want to make a difference. So um, I just want, I just want to draw attention to that. our residents come first, but this is a, we have a regional responsibility here at the North end of Lake Washington. Thank you. Very good. Anastasia and then Deborah. Yeah, so in my experience in dealing with a, uh, with um, with with public comment and and residents is you're going to have different subsets of people that are going to be interested in either signing up in advance or not. So for some people, the added hey sign up in advance to get on a, a list it's actually going to be a significant hurdle for them. the the main The main draw to Zoom is you sort of pop in real time. I'm in the kitchen, but I'm going to step away for a second. I'm in. Let's go. Um, and the other thing is some people really crave the visit, the, the sort of the human touch aspect and, and it's the video. It's being able to turn on the video and sort of see you. So um, it, it's, it's challenging. There's sort of subsets within sort of access and how the, the, the residents and community leaders or whoever want to communicate with their local council um, that, that changes. And I guess we, ha we sort of have to think about access a little bit more holistically and what we mean and 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 then whittle down to what can still allow for a high functioning meeting um, and maybe that's sort of a further conversation but gosh I just can't stress enough that to actually test this out you know we're gonna have to work through it in person and test these you know actually have people call in and we can't just emulate that you know or, or simulate that in in pandemic times it's too tricky and I can't rally uh, as much as I'd like to I can't rally 10 staff people to come play in the council chambers with me for two hours you know I, I, I which is just not feasible so we have to give ourselves time to figure this out but I, I like like I said I think the um, the spirit of, of what you're saying is totally spot on and I, I I think it's amazing and it could be an, a great amenity to to everyone that wants to participate in their local democracy. On one, one level, unfortunately, I think you're going to get some time because I don't think you're going to be out of the Zoom environment anytime soon, to be honest with you. But that aside, Deborah and then Karina, we are headed towards a 1030 break and I really think we're in great shape. So um, that's coming right up. So Deborah and then Karina. Yeah, um, I, I realized one thing that I did want to say that that um, I do want some feedback on is, you know, one thing that I think has been disruptive um, is the introduction of materials and sharing screen. Um, so I guess I, my preference would be to treat materials like we have in the past, which is you submit them electronically. 
um, because otherwise people are using their three minutes and then we're going long. And so to, to use the Zoom or whatever we end up being um, for video and audio with, with a person, but not with materials. Point, Karina and then Melanie. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I hear what Council Member Shrebnik is saying and um, recently took a, some, a, a training on um, our First Amendment and our city attorney did uh, give us a little bit of guidance here <coughs> is um, socially economic. Sometimes people do not have um, the capacity to uh, send something in electronically, you know, uh, for some of our, our community, they're calling in. Uh, so that's mail then, right? Uh, they're going to submit something via mail. We can definitely do that. Um, cause that at least we provide a pathway for a written, uh, document to come to us. Um, we definitely wouldn't want to circumvent that. So that being said, I, I think, yeah, as long as we all come to a consensus and a, you know, and we're all on board, we can commit to it. I think that's important. Okay. Melanie, David, and Nigel. Yeah, and and I, I I was I realized we didn't come to a consensus on that, that um, screen share yesterday, which I, I think was part of one thing that I was really hoping we would come to a consensus off on. I thank you, Council Member Shrebnik, for bringing it up and Council Member File. I think it's incredibly important that the materials, if they want to be shared, be shared with us in advance and entered into the public record. Um, I, I want to make sure that we're in consensus and supporting our mayor as he's facilitating our meetings. So we can say, we have a process for this, please submit it. You can submit it after the fact and we'll give it consideration if, if, you know, if, if they want to screen share and they weren't prepared. So I just wanted to say, I think it's absolutely important that we make a decision on this and, and stick with it. Okay, David and Nigel, and then we'll come back to, did we make a decision? So if they're able to join the meeting electronically and they're able to screen share, they're able to send us an electronic copy of their material. Uh, somebody on the phone would not be doing screen share. So I think it's important. The other thing we need to realize is citizen comments is not mandatory. It's something that we have chose to do because we want to hear from our public. So, um, Yeah, I'm in favor of not having screen shares. I think it is uh, causes more problems in the long run than than it helps. Okay, Day, uh, Nigel and Joe. Yeah, I, I agree with the mayor and, and <clears throat> Councilmember Shrebnik. I think it's pretty disruptive um, and kind of throws the meeting off the rails a little bit. Um, I also think it's completely it's a massive deviation from our norms when we were doing meetings in person. Um, we wouldn't let somebody during public comment, you know, put a PowerPoint up on the big screen behind us. Uh, they would pass it out before the meeting to all the council members and we would look at it maybe while they're talking. Um, you know, we, we need to, the, the public comment is a forum, but it's not necessarily an unlimited forum. It's not something where they can take over our meeting completely. It's a place for them to speak and let their, let their voices be heard and they can pass out you know, through email, they can email the clerk, they can email the council. Um, and we can take all that into consideration, especially if we have it ahead of the meeting. But I, I don't think that allowing screen sharing is, um, frankly, has been particularly useful for our meetings. And B, I think it's been mildly detrimental and I would like to do away with that as a norm. Okay, Joe. I'm concerned about the worst case scenario in which some somebody who's uh, completely imbalanced uh, angry or whatever, or is uh, seeking to troll everything will suddenly screen share something utterly inappropriate. If there are safeguards against it beforehand, great. But the moment that goes up, then we're going to have to scramble to bring it down and everything. So I'm just really worried about the the worst case scenario. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that uh, for that reason, unfortunately, we have to expect, expect that and we um, probably shouldn't have the screen share. So I'm here, I think I'm hearing consensus that, that you would want to tamp down screen share. I think I also am hearing that if they want to 
present materials and would look to that format that you'd ask them to submit that material if they certainly can in advance so that you can review it and see it. Am I getting that right in terms of uh, how you folks are thinking on this? Okay, uh, Angela. Um, related to citizen comments specifically, like I think this idea is excellent. I think it's great that we evolve and leverage technology and increase access to the city council meetings. This is more of an operational um, suggestion, so I'll let Rob and his team consider it, but there isn't much information on the website for a resident to know which way to communicate with council in which best form, you know, like what, what, when would I, you know, like how should I use email versus citizen comments versus showing up at a meeting versus coffee for council. So I feel like maybe that's something that we could put on the website to help people navigate that more easily. And then um, something that I thought of as we were going over the city council rules recently was that some of those rules are so specific and um, residents probably aren't looking at those. So I wonder if we might be able to incorporate that into the agenda or somewhere before the city council meeting agendas to just remind people that this is how we respond or that we won't engage in conversation during citizen comments. We take that into consideration. We already have a work plan. We will consider your input at X time, you know? As a, as a follow up to that, several of my clients back in the old days when we actually had meetings and talked face to face, when folks would come to public comment, and they would have to, most of them have people sign up and they want to know and they manage that. But they also would have a handout for them that would do exactly what you said, would tell them what the rules of engagement are, different ways to contact folks and how, how generally the process would work. So that was then, you can do it differently now, but that's a common or at least one, an effective way to go, I would say. Nigel, did you have your hand up there? Yeah, okay. Just really quickly, um, one, in our council rules, we do have something saying that, you know, as public comment starts, um, you know, the mayor's supposed to, I, there's a quick little two or three bullet thing about, um, you know, the council that public comment is a time for the public to, to, to give their ideas to us, but that there won't be any back and forth and staff may follow up later. There's some sort of quick thing. It's laid out in the rules. Um, I'm not sure if we've been doing that during our remote meetings every time. Um, we have. Okay. Um, so there's that, but two, I think the idea of, uh, clarifying on the council website, how to participate or how to best participate, it would be super useful and it wouldn't be that difficult. Um, cause you're right for a lot of folks, you know, how to get involved or how to make their voice heard to their city is scary and arcane. So the, the easiest we can make it for folks, the better. Okay. The folks are kind of in agreement, and I assume I want to assume something that a or two things that you're kind of in agreement that maybe some uh, tutorial or information for folks on the website is desirable, and then the second thing coming to the staff is that I'm assuming that's doable and all of that, but I don't want to have you go forward with that without hearing that that's something that could occur, either Anastasia or Rob. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, I'm, it shouldn't be a problem at all to add that clarifying, um, some, some clarifying direction right there on your council page. And also those sort of preamble points, the small points, um, you know, while they're on the physical agenda, people might not be looking at the physical agenda when they're in the meeting. So almost a repetitive but clear uh, preamble that's sort of read before public comment and I'm happy to do that um, if that if that's easier or the mayor can do that and it's just it's going to be exactly what what we expect of them but also what they can expect of us and the, the entirety of the council because you're right it, it, it's a sterile it's a sterile environment where you can't talk to them and and they don't understand that that's part of the format it's not personal um, so to help them feel more at ease I I think that sounds fine. Rob, what do you think? Yeah, I was listening to the King County Council Law and Justice Committee last month, and they have awesome language that gets read right before public comment. It's clear, it's blunt, it sets out the expectation. Okay, David, and then I want to look at our getting you to break. 
Yeah, Anastasia, let's you and I talk. I think it's a really good idea. Let's you and I uh, talk here after uh, after the retreat. Maybe. You got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's take that ten thirty break. We have uh, a couple more items to talk about before we have yeah. goal setting. So, pardon me. Um, I just want to be clear on where we landed with uh, remote public comment when things go back to normal. Um, I heard Anastasia say that she, her top priority is going to be working out the bugs on the new system before we start adding features. Is that okay? But, but okay, with, I see lots of heads nodding. With the goal to go to that feature as soon as we can. Okay. Okay. All right, let's, uh, you need 10 or 15? 10 minutes, C in 10. Okay, next item, council training budget. And I don't remember getting that in an interview. Maybe Rob, is that yours or? Okay. Yeah, I think it's kind of mine and council member Shreb next. Hey, um, just on a side note, I ran across the street to go cash a check. Beautiful, sunny, crisp day out there. And I saw about a dozen people hanging out in the town square, including some kids climbing on the big rocks. Yeah. So it kind of made me smile. Good. Um, anyway, um, yeah, you guys have a council training budget and hasn't been an issue really. We just try to accommodate your training, but What's weird about this year is um, the travel portion has been cut from everybody, including staff. There's, we don't have a travel budget this year, but we do have a training budget to pay for conference registrations and things like that. And um, I just, it always feels weird to me when one of you, my bosses, asks me to approve your training. I just, I don't know, I feel weird about that. And um, if it's a if it's a request for a big, a bigger tuition amount for the training, then that's where I kind of feel like I need council guidance. Okay, Deborah, and then Melanie. Yeah, I brought this to Rob to see whether we wanted to put it on the agenda. I was aware that we had a fair amount of back and forth, and you know, I mean, it's Rob's getting put in the middle, um, and. It also doesn't feel particularly equitable to me. Um, so I just, I wondered whether, you know, we sign on for a four year term um, and, you know, maybe we just say, you know, we have a individual training budget and you, I mean, tra you know, training and conference, you know, sort of the whole package. Um, and, uh, you know, cause some people can access trainings more easily than they can go to a conference. Uh, and and vice versa. Some people have more interest in conference uh, than training. I think either way, the upshot would need to be what is the council going to get out of it? Um, and if it's a training, then they need to come back and present about the training, what they learn, the key takeaways. If it's a conference, uh, similar, and there would be an expectation of networking and benefiting the city. Um, you know, these are city dollars, so the city's got to get something out of it. Um, so um, I, you know, I think either way, uh, we need to be respectful of everybody's ability to participate in these dollars, not just one or two. So I, I guess I want to put out there the idea of an individual um, training cap for the, for the four years. And if you decide you want to blow it on year one, then that's your prerogative. Melanie? Yes, I, I would support that. I also, um, I know that first year training, first, first new year is a little different because it's a little, so knowing that there's a four year option um, and upfront would be great uh, budget. I also would recommend at our annual budget process that we put forward what we plan on requesting for the next year. Mm. So that it's visible to us and the public what our plans are. Because you know, we have annual things, mm. NLC twice a year, um, other conferences that you know do provide benefit to our city. But we also do want to think about, especially like this year, um, 
given our budget concerns um, and say the limitations on out of travel training and that sort of thing, um, what we're requesting. So I just, I just, I like the idea of planning ahead and recognizing we have a budget. So if we have something that comes up, we might bring, you know, somehow have a process for, for that that doesn't land on our city manager's shoulders to approve. Okay, David? Yeah, historically, uh, some of us on the council have uh, opted to uh, become more involved um, in, in regional, state, and, and, and federal policy making. Um, I was just appointed to AWC's nominating committee for one thing. That was something that wasn't expected, uh, but I got appointed to the nominating committee, which means um, it's, there's uncertainty, but the meeting's in Spokane this year. So there's uncertainty whether it's going to be Zoom or But in any event, that's something that I can't plan for or it n n none of us can plan for. I'm also very heavily involved with National League of Cities, having been on the board of directors. I'm on the advisory council. That's a lifetime position, but I'm also involved with the Information Technology and Communications Committee, where I've been vice chair a couple of times and uh, been active in that committee for a number of years. And those committee meetings are um, three times a year. So all of that really needs to be taken into consideration. Yeah, and with, uh, with those about that stuff. So anyway. Yeah, if I could just add to the mayor, with, with those NLC committee meetings, they expect you to pay for your own travel, right? Right. Okay, Karina and then Nigel. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to uh, address a couple things. So one, our mayor takes on a, a larger amount of travel uh, responsibilities and that does affect uh, things here and there. And so I think the mayor and deputy mayor's budget may need to be bigger, to be honest, real honest. Um, Personally, in my first year, I took mostly free online on-demand training classes uh, to achieve my certificate, my advanced certificate. Maybe there are classes that were $15 or $35 here and there. Um, more recently, and, and I didn't, you know, take any travel or, you know, major um, uh, away training. Uh, that would have added any big extra dollars. Uh, I did recently request to to take a, a three month uh, training opportunity that came through National League of Cities. Um, Mayor Baker is also taking the same training. Um, there are other options that are, were out there, but it was a, a less expensive option. But it was a a three month commitment. Um, and so it's a, a deep, in-depth training, which will benefit the, the council as their humanistic uh, approaches to um, uh, leadership, let alone uh, working together with our, our community engagement and uh, really how the policy works. Um, so it's a really deep dive. Um, that being said, uh, you know, it, it was a cost probably equivalent to a hotel stay if you're going to a National League of Cities conference, like Council Member O'Kane and Mayor Baker did um, last year, right? Uh, and that's not even talking about airplane fare or anything like that. But we do have duties to represent, to learn, to grow. Um, there is one difference, Council Member O'Kane. Um, where not all training is advertised a year in advance. Um, mm. AWC, National League of Cities, uh, things come up er maybe every couple months, um, they expand, some things fit, some things don't. And again, some council members um, don't use their, their time. And so that's a good way, this budget so far has been adaptable in past history. Um, and mostly people have been supportive of each other. And so I like to throw out those concepts and ideas and that transparency. Hey, Nigel, then Melanie. 
Yeah, I mean, part of the reason why I think this issue came up this year is because this is the first time we've taken a cut um, to these things. And so it's made it um, that coupled with um, the training that council member file and the mayor are, are signing up for, um, for the first time that took a big chunk out of that budget um, in a way that wouldn't have been, that could have been easily accommodated in previous years. Um, in previous years, we've been able to kind of handle these on an ad hoc basis or, you know, as they come up. And it hasn't been, it hasn't been that big of a stretch because in the grand scheme of things, our travel budget is a relatively small part of everything else we're dealing with. And we've been able to accommodate most of these things. So I, I'm not sure if I want a one-year aberration to completely change how we change things going forward. I, I do, um, I do want to, you know, reiterate what Councilmember File said. Things do pop up relatively on short notice sometimes, and um, expecting folks to know how they're going to spend their money in January when things are coming up and pop up in September may not be always realistic. I mean, things I know is once we're back in person, uh, you know, I'd want to go back to, you know, the NLC uh, conference in November because um, I think that has helped make me a better council member and has given me a lot of background, a lot of networking with folks and. Um, allowed me to deep dive into a bunch of different topics that uh, has given me a better background to do my work here. But, um, and I wouldn't want to take that away from folks or, I, I don't know, I just, I, I don't want to allow a one year budget aberration to turn into something that further constrains uh, folks' ability to access um, trainings. Okay, Melanie and then Karina. Correct. I don't think we want to have a one year experience change things. Um, but I think as a person who manages budget at the Port of Seattle, a public agency, we do plan our budget. We do have visibility on the conferences and trainings that we plan on attending. And we're able to do that for the most part. Of course, there are things that come up. But I think that there's a way that we could have a budget per person and we can share it, you know, some of us aren't going to, like for me, I probably will do less training I, I, and fewer conferences. That's, that's kind of my, my sense on, on where, I, where I am on this. Um, but the, the thing is, we do have council members that do want to travel and do want to go to more conferences or need to on behalf of our city as, as it comes up. So I'm not, I'm not saying no, I'm saying let's plan ahead, let's make it visible. And like council member Shrevenick advised, let's have report outs because that will show us and our community where those dollars are going. A trip to NLC is incredibly expensive, I learned. And I, I, I think it was beneficial and I'm very thankful that I was able to go and represent on behalf of our, of our city. Um, but it's also something that uh, I, 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 just, I just think that we should plan ahead and be mindful of our budgets as council members. And of course, be willing to share if we're not using our budget, if necessary, and scale back as needed according to budget. But when they're in line items, we can go, this conference cost $5,000 with training, you know, with, with, with registration, travel, and hotel. So we can say, this is a line item that we are removing from our budget rather than necessarily a full blanket removal of items related to travel. Um, it's just, it's just, it's mainly about visibility and planning because the majority of our training is planned. We can usually look ahead. Thank you. Okay, Karina, then Deborah. Thank you. Um, when I made a request for training and Mayor Baker made a request for training, uh, we, we vetted that through the city manager and, and checked into what was still available in the remaining budget for the year because there's a yearly budget. And uh, what was great is that we came to kind of a, a, a consensus and our city manager was able to, to notice that there were unutilized um, funds there that had not yet um, been used. They, just, they do go away. I mean, it goes back into a different budget, but uh, so our, our budget's still the same amount for this year, uh, even though it's reduced due to the, the council training budget cuts that we, we just agreed to. Um, that being said, uh, the, 
there is option and opportunity. Um, I personally scheduled my life very thin. I, I water a little bit in here and water a little bit in there. And uh, I, I try to be a sponge, <laughs> you know, and just absorb as much as I can, um, but responsibly. And so I've tried to be very careful um, and, and considerate. Deborah, Joe, and Melanie. Yeah, I think the report out is is a key for me. And, you know, maybe we could start with some of the things, trainings that the folks have already had with that and um, kind of putting those. And it doesn't have to be live. I mean, uh, feedback is just, you know, summarizing the key points. You can send that to us. Uh, the folks that have been going to trainings, that would be great. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think it needs to be hard and fast, but, you know, the equivalent of an NLC, I mean, NLC is expensive, you know, if you're doing five days, five nights registration, I mean, it's not cheap. Um, but, you know, thinking about that kind of figure in your head of, you know, let's, let's keep to that maybe per person other than the mayor, you know, on a, maybe a two year cycle, like, like let's roughly think about, we're not going to individually exceed that. I mean, that, that's, I don't think we have to be rigid, but um, I, 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 I just, I am, it, it doesn't feel particularly equitable right now. So that's, that's, I just want to be very sensitive to the people who may not have been so, uh, who may be less assertive about, um, taking trainings and going to conferences. And Joe and then Melanie. I agree with council members Shrevnik and O'Kane. I tend towards the fiscally conservative in this. I'm cautious about travel and these conferences uh, and all this, um, unless they seem to result and they sometimes do result in tangible specific results for the for the city um, that couldn't be obtained otherwise for instance i think we have uh we have state lobbyists um if we're doing or there's some amount of federal lobbying that can't be accomplished by somebody else examples like that but i definitely tend towards the fiscally conservative on this i believe that the, uh, the voters put everybody in based on their talents and abilities at the time for sure, uh, there is a place for, there's a balance between, I think, getting something or getting yourself improved for the benefit of the city and then an amount of personal enrichment that may be something uh, that people can fund themselves. So there's a, I, I err towards being fiscally responsible towards the citizenry on this. Very good, Melanie? Um, yes, and there, there are two, two things that I'd like to say. First, when we're making this discussion, I want to make sure it's clear that we're coming at it from a process perspective rather than looking at individuals. Because this is about you know, policy and procedure and how we proceed. Um, I don't think we need to look backwards. This is about where we want to go forwards. The, the next piece is, I, at least this is, this is my sense with it, and I can say, um, my, my experience is I was, I feel like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it more like this. I feel like we can have more process related to our training budget. And it doesn't have to be fixed and rigid as we've recognized there are things that do come up. But I do think decision-making relate, excuse me, espresso machine. Apologies, I, I have an industrial uh, machine in the background that my daughter didn't hear. I was it speaking. Um, excuse me. Can you hear me now? Okay. But I, I was just going to advise, advocate for, I don't want it to be too rigid, but for us to have more process related to training, because it can be very expensive as Councilmember Marshall and Councilmember Shred, Shrednick alluded to. I think it's valuable and important. So it's not to negate it. It's just for us, and I don't think we have to make a decision on what it looks like right now. I just wanted to draw attention to my, my, my support for more process around our training budget. I might offer an, uh, maybe a, a tool. Uh, some uh, folks 
tend to structure their training based on some mechanisms like if a new council person comes on or two or three, the value of going to AWC training or other kinds of training to facilitate that, you know, that steep learning curve is structured into the budget, if you will. Um, if the various ones of you are representative of this represent the city and that representation is is at the service I remember of projects that you're involved in or things you want to do they attach monies to those specific areas so that it's not really discretionary for the council person in other words and that's a third bucket and that is okay you know I gee I'd really like to learn this I just got appointed to this board and, and boy, if I could get some training on that or what have you. So I think there's a, not a, a different ways to, to approach it that takes discretion out of it and sort of establishes some support for the position you've been elected into initially as a, a kind of a rookie, if you will, we've all been there, or if you've been appointed as the mayor to this position, what have you. And I do know in the past, Rob, you can correct me on this, but my memory seems to say that when it came to lobbying, going to DC and so on, that was a sort of a separate bucket, I think, that you had. So you've, you've done that kind of thing in the past and, and that, that may help you here. I don't know, just a thought, so. Okay, any other discussion on this? Yes, I, I just wanted to reiterate that I believe the deputy mayor and mayor should have a larger uh, bucket. Um, it's very important that they both have ample opportunity for extensive training, um, continuing training, um, and just want to put out there again, there's a lot of available online on demand, low cost or free training. And I took a lot of that this year. <laughs> um, and so it's very accessible. Those options exist. Um, so, and they're, they're very, and for the ones that cost a little bit, they're, they're tiny and still yet on demand. Uh, so if the opportunity is about um, working it in one's busy life, there, there, there is a way and there's an opportunity. And I know that we all allocate our families um, and our time with our independent lives differently. Um, and that being said, at the end of the year, do we want to consider um, if there's, you know, budget for the year that's not met or, you know, there's a, a training that somebody wants to partake uh, and there's still a little bit of a unutilized budget, do we want to be able to shift that to an opportunity for, for someone who does want to take a training if it should come up? Um, I think it's something to be considered. And I think this is definitely different than um, us attending like regional um, networking events where we're expected to represent the city and make those connections and grow uh, upon many, much of the work that we do happens with those networking events. It's so important. Um, to be able to and I think you've played over your head as a size of your city because you have recognized that over time. Kind of want to check where we are uh, in the discussion. It seems like uh, you maybe you want to take a budgeting approach to this rather than going to Rob and say, could you approve my training? I mean, I, I, what, where are we on this? Is it, what, Melanie? I really liked the proposal that you made about the approach, you know, how we, we I think we can take a budgeting planning approach to it and allocated by um, bucket. I can't re recall the word that you used, but I, I, I think there's three things you can do if you want, and this assumes you have all kinds of money, which I realize you, you don't, but, but you could have discretionary funds that follows maybe Deborah's suggestion that each, each position, what goes with that position is a few hundred, few thousand dollars, whatever you have. In addition to that, if you have the monies, you can allocate for the mayor and deputy mayor a certain pot of money. You may also know that you're going to, in the next year or two, be rep representing the city in some key areas and budget specifically to support that. 
and that's more situational real time. So you could do all three of those kinds of things if you chose, and that would kind of take the pressure off of, you know, gee, is it okay if I go? And, and gee, you know, I'd like to go, but I don't go as much. I mean, all that would start to fade away, I think, so. Uh, Nigel. I would just, um, you know, one thing that pops to mind is like the SCA networking dinners that, um, you know, a lot of us have gone to in the past. And I would really hate for, and frankly, I think us being active at SCA has been a major, has been a plus for the city, but it's all soft things. It's networking. It's just having relationships with other city, city council members from around the area. And I would hate for, you know, and that's just one example. I would hate for something like that to fall under the budget and then for us to be weighing that versus training. Um, you know, it's hard to point to exactly the plus of us going to a SCA networking dinner, but the relationships that we build and nurture through those events do in the long run pay off for the city. Uh, but it's hard to point to exact ways that they do it. But it's also important that we have relationships with our neighbors. So it, I'm trying to figure out kind of where the line is between, you know, the proposal of individual budgets, you know, where what falls in there versus what would go through our, whatever our current, you know, what the current system is. Um, no, I, mean. I, 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 where, what I, where I think we could land here is let's plan for budget next year. We have plenty of time. We don't have to make decisions on how or what today. We recognize we have some questions. It's time to, to be aware of it and recognize the impacts of how we budget our training. And so I hear everything here. I think we all heard all sorts of things, but let's, let's be aware and be mindful next year. Thank you. Uh, that's a proposal that basically saying, let's approach this much more specifically in, in t during your budget time and when this item comes up, um, follow your current protocols until then, um, and then go from that point of view. Are you good with that approach? Okay. Salary commission. I know, I don't know anybody. I, we, I, Rob, thank you. Yeah, I asked for this to be on the agenda. Um, so every five, six or seven years, the city council appoints a, um, well, the mayor appoints, council confirms a salary commission. It's a group of, a small group of Kenmore residents that take a look at your salaries. And it looks at like, um, looks at what you do, looks what other cities are paying their city council members, and that makes recommendations on what your salary should be. And you guys appointed a salary commission probably five, six years ago, and that salary commission did a one-time adjustment in your salary, and then um, ha then they also specified that your salaries would increase by 2% per year through the year 2021. Hmm. This, this year, January 1st, was the last year of those 2% annual increases. So now that that's over, if you don't do anything, if you don't appoint a salary commission, your salary will just stay the same in perpetuity. Um, so my question to you, do you want to appoint a salary commission again? And if so, when? Good. David, yes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, given the economy and given what we've done to the budget, um, I, I would be in favor of looking at this next November, let's say, um, to see what's happening with the economy. Okay, other, uh, Joe. Yeah, I agree with the mayor, but had a question, Rob, maybe it wasn't precisely the word you meant to use, but you said in perpetuity, meaning uh, if we don't do anything, we, but we probably could revisit it like the mayor suggests uh, next year or something. Yeah, your, your sal I meant to say that your salary will just stay the same from now on until you choose to do something. Um, okay. Nigel, did you have your hand up? Um, so I'm looking at the Kenmore Municipal Code uh, 240030A, and what it says is every five years commencing in 2010, the Salary Commission shall review and determine the salaries of the city um, mm -hmm. by the city to the mayor and city council. Um, so I actually question whether we have a whole lot of wiggle room on this also due to the wording. 
Um, I would also point out that the salary commission doesn't just recommend salaries. What they give us is what we get. Um, they could lower salaries. They could do all sorts of things with it. Um, so I just wanted to point out what we have in the Kimmerer Municipal Code. Interesting. Okay. Other discussion point? Anybody else? Deborah, and then Joe. Yeah, well, and I think the, and, and maybe I've just missed it because I was zoning out for a minute. The alternative to the, the commission is you can vote as a council, but then it doesn't take effect until, well, and this is what's unclear to me, you as a person are reelected yeah. or you as yeah. a position. So they may be, I guess they'd be rolling in based on the position or something. Yeah. So I'm, I'm seeing nodding. So I think that's, that's how it works. It, it, whoever elected into, you know, position three or whatever it is, um, next time it takes effect. Um, and just reflecting on where this came from, of course, you know, we had, I think kind of said, is there a way we can freeze our salaries? Um, and we were told no, um, but you know, by delaying, if we can, if we can, the salary commission, that would be an effect um, freezing our salaries. Joe, Karina, David, and Melanie. So council member Herbert reading that shall um, triggered my legal instincts. And I wanna immediately ask the city attorney before moving forward, do we have to appoint the commission if that shall is a shall? Karina. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Council Member Joe Marshall, and thank you, Deputy Mayor Herbig. So on point. Um, I, I also want to just really throw out there: there is a way to um, uh, contract uh, gifting back your salary to the City of Kimmore uh, for a period of time. If you don't want to accept it, you do have to accept it. There's taxes on it you gift it back, there's taxes on it again. So there's that. So it causes a little extra work for, for them processing everything, but it's a possibility. People um, serving the city of Kirkland and Bothell have done that in the past, uh, chosen to at different times and re -up, um, and then took their uh, salary from a start point, there's a reason to do it with a contract so that you're not saying, I'm gonna go back and collect all that, I've changed my mind, it's from a point in time. Uh, so I would highly recommend that. If that is something um, anybody wants to do, they should be able to do. There's a reason for having a council salary is to ensure equitable candidates of um, social economics, um, differences can participate in local government. Okay, uh, David and then Melanie. Yeah, th there really is two ways for uh, the, the city council in this instance to, uh, to affect a, an increase in salary. One is to just vote the increase in. That, that's not very equitable in that if we were to vote uh, a raise in, in um, let's say June, then the only people that would get that raise would be the three or four people that were elected in November. The rest would continue on for another two years. If you point a salary commission, everybody gets the salary increase at the same time. So there's no inequities. And that's or decrease one that we did. Uh, we did uh, work with the salary commission. Right. So if we voted in, you don't get it until your next election. If we use the salary commission, everybody gets it the same. Okay, Melanie. Um, so, uh, what what I'd like to call attention to is the salary commission validates our salaries whether they go up or down. It's in the interest of our community to know that our salaries are appropriate to the role that we are providing our community, which has value. I would, add, I would say that we have salaries as publicly elected officials because we are providing value to our community. And I think it's really important that this especially as it's been written as a shell, that we just proceed. We have nothing to be ashamed of. 
nothing. We deserve to have our salaries looked at. And it is important to our community that we are paid appropriately, especially given the current economic situation. Whether it goes up or down, we must take the risk. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? David. It's also important to keep in mind that a city council is a volunteer position, that it's not to be, not to, to uh, uh, pay a living wage. It is to uh, help with some of the time and uh, things lost. Um, so uh, it's not a real paycheck. Okay, Nigel? Yeah, just to kind of build off what the mayor just said, just for the public's sake uh, who's watching, I think the salary currently is right around 10,000, give or take. I don't know the exact number. So yeah, it's not a, it's definitely not, um, I mean, frankly, on a per hour basis, it's probably a pretty um, low hourly low hourly wage seeing the work that we put in here um, and the vacation hours that I know a lot of us bleed to do uh, to do city business. Um, but I, I, I tend to agree with council member, um, Okay, and um, it's important that it gets looked at every once in a while, make sure that it's not out of line with our neighbors. And, um, but, you know, and if our, if the KMC says we shall, then we probably should. I mean, no lawyer, I don't know, but shall, in my experience, means you shall do that. But I, I, I don't know, I think Joe's point about having that reviewed i guess it'd be i do know with other clients that in, if over the years they've gone the direction that i'm hearing your system in that direction because they just didn't want to be faced with that kind of individualistic decision to you know raise their own salary i mean that, that kind of thing and state law of course evolved to to, to address that as well um so so after talking about this Rob, did you get your answer? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to get going on it uh, probably the first half of this year. Stuck with. Uh, all right, can you hear me now? There you go. Um, I'd like to get going on it in the first half of this year, and um, I'd like to talk to our finance department to see if they have the bandwidth for it. Uh, if not, I'll give it to our new human resources manager when they come on board. Um, uh, and my understanding is that the mayor brings forward some names. Oh, here comes Leticia. Um, here comes, uh, and so the mayor brings forward some names and then those names are confirmed by the council. Okay. Are you okay, uh, Nigel? Yeah, the last time we did this, it was a fairly quick, uh, it was a fairly straightforward and quick process. If I remember the, Commission only met maybe once or twice um, to reach their conclusions. This is something that could be done, that could be done in November and we could approve or at least re receive what they uh, report back in December easily enough in time for the 2022, um, beginning of 2022. I'm not sure if this has to be a first half of the year uh, work item, but I'll leave that to, I'll leave that to Rob. Sure, if, if you'd rather see it in the second half of the year, I'm fine with that. Okay. I'm hearing uh, Deborah. Yeah, and I would prefer the second half of the year for exactly the same reason that the mayor said, which is we'll have a, I think, maybe, I hope, a better idea of um, where our economic situation is and the region's is as well by then. Okay. You folks good at that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, wow, here we go. So we are at the end of the, uh, Karina? Yeah, I'm looking at the, the item marked other, <laughs> raising my head. Oh, okay, other. Other. <laughs> so I, I had two, two things I just really wanted to mention there is that uh, earlier yesterday I, I mentioned the Green New Deal and that we really need to have a goal for a net carbon zero, you know, goal, a date, a deadline, a year. So the state says 2050, uh, 
the environmental org say 2030. Uh, I kind of recommend we meet in the middle <laughs> at 2040, but we need some sort of consensus. And the second thing, is, um, if we have to take, maybe we should take them one at a time. Um, so let's just start there with a, a goal. Well, wait a minute. I don't think we're ready. To, what are you asking, I guess? I'm asking for a net carbon zero a goal. Okay, we need, we're not in the goal setting yet, so. Right, but we still have to choose one. <laughs> Well, right. So we're going to go through a process to do that. So I don't, I, you won't be, you'll be able to, to nominate goals. That's going to come. Um, hands are up. Okay. Melanie, Nigel, Deborah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate what council member file has brought to the table. I picture this as part of the climate action plan that we are currently working on. So I, I am, I am confident that that is being taken care of, but I don't think we need to set that at this table right now. Thank you. Okay, Nigel? Yeah, I don't think this is the time uh, to, to get into that level of detail. I think that's part of the Climate Action Plan. Deborah? Same. Same. Okay. Did you have a second? I uh, do. Okay. Um, and I'm thinking about uh, our roles as council members serving the public um, in our duty and the safety of um, our work in the line of our duty, uh, especially uh, given some examples we've seen across our state and elsewhere. But I would feel a lot better knowing that uh, our city manager and the police chief have a an emergency plan, um, a safety plan in place in case there is ever a crisis in our chambers during a public um, a, a meeting or a hearing. Um, we've seen um, different displays happen over the course of years. You know, um, I'd like to see how Port or um, in Kirkland, for example, um, or local school board meetings. Uh, so I think we do have to have a little bit of a safety plan in place for what happens and, uh, and, um, and really how to best prepare. It's always best to be, um, develop a plan in advance versus after the fact. And hopefully we never have an event, but Having a safety plan in place would be good, in my opinion. Well said. Discussion? Nigel? I mean, yeah, obviously there should be a safety plan. Um, I'm not sure if pulling this up under others is quite the right way for us to be handling this, though. Yeah. It just feels a little left field. And um, I don't know if I, I, I just can't remember seeing issues kind of brought out of the blue during the other um, during these retreats before. Angela? Um, forgive me if this is out of order because I'm only on day five of this role, but um, kind of related to what council member file said is I, I was wondering if there is uh, the desire to have some sort of internal council procedures where we could include things like this, maybe emergency procedures, social media use, um, uh, budget requests, training requests, sort of stuff like that, that's just internal to council so that when new council members come on, there are some of these um, expectations already established. And, and I don't know if that is something that we need to generate and have the public um, be a part of or view, or if that's something that we can develop internally and get agreement on. And to answer, answer uh, part of council member Kubler's question there, there are in our rules, I believe that we just went through um, rules about uh, social media use and governance by uh, city council members for sure. And definitely don't definitely want to get back to council member Kubler's question. Um, my thought with a uh, safety plan is, I mean, I think this is uh, the right place at least to address it, but it's in a very, um, preliminary fashion other than, you know, and we 
uh, it's too bad we don't have our police chief here too to briefly address it, but probably we can't go into, into it in that much detail, but it's, yeah, of course it's a good idea. I don't know what that looked like not being a security expert myself. I think we'd need the, the police uh, chief in on that. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, look, here he is. <laughs> okay. Melanie. I just have a question for our city management manager. Do we have a COOP plan, a continuity of operations plan for the city of Kenmore? Yes. And does that include a safety plan for what we're talking about here? We do have a continuity of operations plan, but um, I, I don't think we have a formal plan on um, I, if bad stuff happens at a council meeting, um, other than call 911, but. Okay. Thank you. Other comments? I know our, mm -hmm. our police chief is present in the meeting. It'd be great to, to hear from him. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm still here. Uh, I'm not aware of a specific plan uh, specific to council meetings um, currently in place. It, it certainly wouldn't hurt to have one. Um, it could remain an internal document, just something among um, the council in terms of what to do should X, Y, or Z happen during a meeting. Um, in the past, I've had discussions with the, the previous city clerk about security at the meetings, and I've made myself uh, available and been present at some of the more uh, controversial meetings just to have a presence. That's something that we may at a minimum want to do uh, if we know there is a particular issue where um, it's going to be uh, potentially heated or controversial I could be there um, but in terms of a plan uh, something I can certainly look into and see what uh, other cities do. Joe. I want to make sure uh, that we answered Councilmember Kugler's questions the rest of them or if mine was satisfactory to answering her question or, or no or there's more information for her. Angela? Um, I guess I was looking at a more expanded policy related to social media in um, specifically. Um, it looks like Rob has something to add though. Yeah, we have, we have a social media policy. We'll get it to you. Okay. Um, so uh, we wouldn't design the idea now, but uh, Karina's brought to the table uh, a, an interest. Your chief has commented on it. Is there additional follow-up that you as a council would like to see happen in this area? Uh, Karina. Personally, I would really like to see that our police chief does work with our city manager and kind of develop some sort of a plan. Um, it's always best to have a strategic plan uh, in place. Um, and I, I'm certain that um, that would also be a security issue um, document, you know, so uh, as well as some sort of training, if that was necessary for the council to be part of. and. Um, in a higher executive sense. That being said, that's what I'd like to propose and trust and have good faith that we can, they have our best interests in mind and ensuring, um, you know, public safety and welfare and let alone the, the safety of our work in the line of duty should a crisis ever occur. And hopefully one uh, never does. Okay, David. Yeah, I'm just curious as city manager, how much time this would take certainly from the police chief and from city staff? Well, I'll, I'll let the chief respond, but I'll just say, you know, if there's if there's something that um, another city's worked out and already, already has done that we can plagiarize, um, we'll, we'll do that. Y yes, I can certainly look into it and, and see what other cities do. Luckily there's, not real, it's not real urgent because we won't probably have any in-person meetings for a while, but um, certainly something I can look into. Okay, are you comfortable with that council? Okay, the chief will look into it and you'll talk about it at a future date. Okay, great job. Um, once again, I think we are finished with that general uh, city issue. 
No, maybe not. David and Melanie. Melanie. Oh, I feel like we were done with that. I thought we were done with that issue. I just wanted to share. I have something in the other category as well. And I apologize okay. for missing that a little bit. If we're ready. Please. I, if we're not. No, please go ahead. Okay. Um, it, it came to me yesterday and it's, it's related to, um, let me find, um, I, as, as an employee of the Port of Seattle, we are the economic region, um, engine for the region. That's one of our um, goals and responsibilities. And as um, I think about our city budget and funds and responsibilities to our community, and one of them as we kind of touch on the concept of a Green New Deal, if whether it's that language or we just talk about it in climate change, I mean, climate action and um, environmental stewardship, I would like, I, I have this concept that maybe we could track and we would, this would have to do, we'd have to coordinate this in our contracting, track the job creation and dollars that go directly into people's hands that support our region so that our community understands that we are, when we have capital dollars or operating dollars, where they're going and the benefit of the jobs that are created through that. So as we may move into more salmon habitat recovery, what those funds go towards and the number of people who get jobs out of that so that, and the dollars that that entails for those people. I think it's just an interesting lens that we can be looking at our responsibilities through. I'm not asking for it this minute. I wanted to plant the seed because I think it's important and it demonstrates the benefit of government stewardship of funds. So to, because ultimately a lot of the money we, we, we spend is going into the pockets of people in our community or in our region and we need a healthy region. And we have community members that are concerned about our budget. And I wanna make sure that they see that when we're spending this money, it's serving us as a community, as a region. So I just, it's a high level concept that I wanted to share. Okay, discussion? Okay, is this something that maybe could inform the budget process and maybe some communication plan or what have you going forward? I think so. I just, I just want to put it out there as something that I think we, we can be thinking about and moving towards because I think it's a very important for, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go on too far. There's been so much demonization of government spending over the past 30 to 40 years. I think it's important that the benefits of government spending are seen. And that okay. was kind of where the idea comes from. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else in other, lurking in the other category? No. Okay. So we are now at the point of a lunch break. We're a little bit ahead of schedule. I'm loving that. Um, you want to take a uh, half an hour to get a bite and then come back and do goals and um, yeah, get it moving. Uh, is that, would that be good for you? That'd be good to watch the Seahawks. All right, we'll get this accomplished. All right, take 30 minutes, take a break, get something good to eat, and we'll be back. Back at 12.15. Michael, Michael, may I just have a sidebar with you? Is that It's uh, always a challenge to be inside on a sunny day in the winter. I would have had this, had we not done the retreat, I'd have still had this tension because I like to ride my bicycle on a sunny day, even in the winter, but the Seahawks are playing, so. They are indeed. They are, so, I don't know. An hour and a half. No. Well, I had, 12.15 in my mind for a startup time, uh, more or less. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if Joe's in, in the background or not. So do you recall, Mr. Mayor, what, exactly what time we pulled out? Are, are we getting close? I'm, I'm thinking 12.15 also. 11.45. Right. Okay. 
Uh, should we wait a couple of minutes for Joe or should we proceed or? I want to wait for Joe. We'll wait okay. a couple of minutes. Yeah. I'm just taking a look at our uh, priorities from January, and have I been mistakenly called a, calling it a financial sustainability plan instead of a financial stability plan? Have I been using the wrong word this entire year? No, it's a typo. Yeah, I thought it was sustainability. <laughs> yeah, I was just. Well, yeah, you could be habitually in trouble. I guess you could say it was stable, but. Uh... Yeah, it's sustainability, I think. Yeah. Well, making it stable was the whole point, but. <laughs> right. Boy, what a year. Oh, my stars. I, I tell you. And 2021 hasn't exactly been an easy ride in the first few days. I got to tell you that. It's like, geez. Hello, okay, are we ready to go? Okay, let's, let's begin. Um, I, uh, let me talk quickly about what I think we're going to do here. It's very similar to what we've done in the past. The first thing I want to do is go through the existing priorities and ask just one question. I just want us to go through every one of them and answer this question. Is it accomplished? Is it finished? Can we pull it off? Okay. If the answer is no, uh, we'll leave it on. And then we go to the second question is, I'll go through them again. Do we need to reword these in any way that represent more accurately where we are with this particular goal? So we've determined it stays on the list. We then refine it. And when we do this, we typically don't get heavy into wordsmithing, we get into conceptual additions. Sometimes it leads to bullets, sometimes it leads to modifiers or other kinds of words you want in there, but we don't spend a ton of time getting exactly right. And we kind of leave that to the editorial process and you see these a couple more times before they're, they're, they're yours. And then the third thing that I ask is, are there new goals? Anything you want to add? to the competitive list. Um, having said that, I, I look at your priorities. You have 11 of those. Boy, if, if we could stay under 15, um, it would make the par paired comparison methodology, which I think everybody's familiar with. Maybe Angela, did I go over that with you? Okay, great. Um, so, that's the approach that I'm proposing. That's what we've done in the past. Are we all good with that? Okay. So uh, as has happened in the past, uh, events during the middle of the year has led to an addition to your priorities. And I'm looking at that in red right now. This is not the first time that's happened. Um, and one of the things that I've always been impressed about with you and your city is how nimble you are how quickly you can recognize and, and go to a scenario, a situation, and, and reflect it throughout your processes. And I think I see that here in this one. So, and so in red, I won't read it to you, you see that there. Um, my question to you is, can we first, for, for the purposes of our conversation, call this the, the DEI goal or, or priority and knowing we're going to flesh it out, but I need, I need fewer words as we go through the process. And yeah. so I'm going to ask you, is that still in play? I assume it is, but it's, this is you. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's in. All right. The existing number one 
uh, focus uh, multimodal transportation. You've heard me use those words. Is that, has that been accomplished? Does that come off? Well, Rob. Um, I'm sorry, in the red, there's actually two goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's responding to the pandemic and there's DEI. Yeah. Okay. So. I like to recommend right. responding and to the pandemic. Do you want to keep responding to the pandemic? You keep them both on, right? Okay. All right. Um, multimodal transportation, does that stay in? Okay. Um, increase preserve options for affordable housing stock, does that stay in? Okay. Uh, Kenmore Climate and Environmental Action Plan, does that stay in? Melody. Just might change it from develop to implement, maybe. I'm not sure. Are we still in development? Well, what I'm going to do is go back, and we'll and we're going to look at each one of these, and then you right. can change these words. Yes, but but I like your thought process. If that's where it is, Karina. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. that's cool. I'm actually going to recommend we throw it under um, uh, a green new deal because be well, okay. So wait, wait, wait. I'm, just, I'm glad you brought that up. We'll get to whether what new goals are. Um, you can be thinking about what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say is, what I heard yesterday is Green New Deal is not a goal. Green New, New Deal is a frame of reference. And you can think about that because we're going to get to number three, which is, you know, um, any new goals. But I'll, I'll leave that with you because that's where I heard this council land as of yesterday. Um, okay, so we'll reword it, but three stays in. Implement walkways and waterways. Is that accomplished? No. Stays in? Okay. Financial sustainab uh, sustainability plan, right? Yep. Not is that? That in? one's done. Done. Can we yeah. pull it off? Yep. Okay. Congratulations. Love it. Oh, and by the way, I should point out, as Stages is in behind us, kind of doing this, we're going to redo all this at a break and come back with these numbered and kind of monikered. So when we go to paired comparisons, we can make that thing happen. Uh, so that's happening uh, behind us. Thank you, Anastasia. Support bus rapid transit on 522. Is that still in? Yes. Still ongoing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, implement economic development plan. Is that still in? Yes. Okay. Foster welcoming, diverse, aff affirming community, celebrating culture and fun. Is that still in or is that part of DEI? Part of DEI. Yeah. Deborah? <sighs> Sort of. <laughs> I mean, I think the piece that isn't is that it's the fun part. Okay. And we, we always had kind of a where's the fun goal. It used to say something else, but sure. that's the piece that I think is not covered in DEI. Okay. Let me just kind of give them, uh, I'll, I'll come quick to you in a minute, Melanie, but I want to say something real quick. Also, our rules of engagement around this is if any one council member wants something to stay in, it stays in, and then it has to pass the test against the others. So we've never, so, so it, I mean, and we can come back and modify that. Okay. Um, it, so you, when we get to that, if, so Deborah, if you have concerns about that, what I would suggest is that you would say, I want to leave this in. I may, be think, I may think part yep. of that is under DEI, but yep. I'd like to modify it when we get to step two, okay? Yep. All right, Melanie. And I, I'm sorry to belabor this, because um, I just right. want to be clear on my understanding, because I, I I, I'm hoping that we maybe we could put the fun in the DEI, and that way um, we don't have two items to measure against because I think this is so important. I would not want to have to have these two items compete with each other for priority. Okay, you can decide that when we finally get down to that wordsmithing and, and the way we handle that is you can propose that, but if any one of your colleagues goes, no, I'd like it to stand alone because what has to happen is now it runs again, when we do paired comparison, it now has to compete in that regard. And over the years, folks 
having gone through this, kind of calculate, gee, do I want it to compete or would I rather be? So you'll be thinking about that this thing. Okay. Uh, number nine on this page, uh, engage and educate community on growth and development in Kenmore. Has that been accomplished? Can it be pulled off? I'd honestly forgotten that this was a item. It just seems very amorphous to me. It's, it's, it's not heard. in the top five, so for sure, but I just want to know, is it still on the page? I, I think mm -hmm. it's still on the page and I have an idea for when we get to the next Okay. Thing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Continue to implement parks capital improvement plan. Is that uh, still on the roster of priorities? Yes? No? Was, was that on there mainly because we were working on this last year? Like, was there a reason why parks was bumped up into our priorities in particular last year? Or is this people viewing this as an ongoing thing? Because it's a very specific part of our CIP to be calling out. Good point. I can't, I can't answer that. You'll yeah, have I don't, I don't remember, frankly. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with removing it. Yeah. Did we do the park CIP this last year? I think we did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that was why whole, it was. The whole six year CIP, yeah. So maybe that's why it was on there. I, mm -hmm. I can't remember. So I'm hearing, pull it off. Uh-huh. Okay. Fine with that. Done. Uh, continue to implement, uh, excuse me, Michael, dummy, sorry, uh, I marked off the wrong one. Sorry, continue to seek opportunities to complete a successful Lake Point project. Is that still in? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, we're, step two, let's go back. And we're going to talk about wording, not so much for wordsmithing perspective, a little bit, but mostly to make sure it the content represents what you intend. This is really important to you. It's really important to your city manager and staff so they get a sense of really what it is you think this is because it's not uncommon for council person A to think it's one thing and council person B to think it's another. So we'll, this, this can take a little bit of time, but as I look at this wording, I, on, on, I'm looking at the red piece now, which I have number one and number two with. How, how do you want, if at all, to reconfigure this? Or do you? Reconfigure, can you say what you mean there? Reconfigure well, one and two? Right, right. Are there any changes okay. here? And the one change that I would then, I would call out because of Rob's comment is, he says this is actually two goals. Well, and yeah, the way there are I, goals for sure. Right. So, do we call this goal number one and goal number two, and call it respond to pandemic and and then uh, the DEI piece? Is that how you'd like to have that go, Karina? So what I'd like to recommend is that <clears throat> oh, we move to um, working through a diversity and equity lens in the work we do. So if we take that framework uh, and our work ahead, that's a point of reference of where we start um, that ensures equity in the process of what we do. And it is a, a, just a, a healthy quality example of where you start because diversity and equity is just never a, a bucket item. It should never be just a bucket item. I, I'd like to hold for a minute and go to Anastasia. I feel like she has yeah, so, a logistic. So, yep, in the background, I now have number one, re respond to the pandemic, and number two, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Correct. And, and what we're now wanting to hear is, is that something you want to do? Yes. Okay. Yes, Anastasia. Karina, back to you. Yeah. I, I didn't understand what you said. I'm sorry. I apologize. So I, I, I need to get a little better, get my, get my ears on. The diversity and equity is the lens in which you focus your work through in all things you do. Um, it's starting here instead of it being a, a little checkbox you mark or, or you know you try to achieve. It, it comes to um, just quality governance in our policy reviews and all the work we do. And so 
I'm recommending that we consider diversity and equity as the lens we filter our work through. Not a goal? It, I think it will um, remain a goal uh, in the way of, uh, we can put it under the Green New Deal and we continue that work, but um, it's where you, it's really tr traditionally where you start and frame the work through because if you look at it as a bucket item, you're not going to achieve, achieve success, quality success for development in your community. Um, so, Deborah and Nigel on this. Uh, yeah, so this is goals and priorities for next year. So I think to be concrete, I think. I think we still do want to just take out the word, begin the process and just say, develop and implement yes. uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, policy and program. And, you know, that will be our first step in creating the framework and the lens uh, through which we do our work. So I, I feel like we need to, you know, stay the course. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was so going to say, I was going to say largely the same thing. I think this year it kind of is a bucket item because we're developing the framework so that in the future, it is a lens we're looking through, but we have to develop that framework and do that work to get there. So I still think it's important that it be a standalone priority. And forgive me for not preempting or, or, or saying this, I needed to say this at the beginning, but I want us to keep in mind that the two, the two primary purposes of priorities uh, has expressive value. So you're communicating with these priorities to yourself and others. And it also has functional utility. You're going to, if you don't fund them, they don't make it, they won't happen. So, so the city managers in the room listening to this going, okay, I, I, you know, I need to know because they need to put some resources behind it and what have you. So that those are the kind of generic drivers of all of this, if you, if you will. So, okay. So, We'll modify goal number two to basically say to develop and implement uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion policy and program. Okay. Um, now, what becomes goal number three, which was your old one, was multimodal transportation. Do you want to change any wording on this? Stay the course. Where are we on this, Nigel? I might suggest um, that maybe we change the wording a little bit. Um, so focus on and emphasize multimodal transportation, remove the word safety in the city of Kenmore, which specific focus on pedestrian bicycle and, um, other means of travel. And then I would actually fold, um, I would keep implement sidewalk plan target zero. I would actually fold BRT on 522 underneath this, um, cause transit falls is multimodal. Um, so I would, I would do that to kind of pare bridge. down the list a little bit. The bridge. Okay. Well. <laughs> Yeah, except the bridge isn't multimodal. The bridge is... Oh, good point. I mean, the bridge is, is car. I mean, kind of, but... It's going to have a bike lane. We never had that. Okay, David and then uh, Karina. Barry. Yes. What he said. <laughs> okay. So, under... Let me focus on uh, and emphasize multimodal transportation in the city of Kenmore with a specific focus on pedestrian, bicycle, and other means of travel in bullets, implement sidewalk, target zero. I'm just put the initials BR2, BRT 522, and, did, and also ferry? Yes. E-ferry. Passenger ferry. Yeah, passenger ferry. Yeah. Okay, are we all good with that modification? Okay. So, so all we're doing is taking out the word safety in that first sentence, am I correct? I think safety yeah. is covered by target zero, so. Yep. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Nigel, for that. Um, old two is now four. Increase and preserve the options for affordable housing stock. Any changes there? No. Okay. Number three, which is now number five, develop a Kenmore climate environmental action plan, including water, air, forest, and habitat restoration. Melanie. I, I, I was thinking just the entry might be something along the lines of continue focus on Kenmore climate and environmental action plan rather than develop because 
we've started developing, you know, we've got one portion, definitely the climate action plan. Not sure where we are on um, environment, but maybe just continue focus on climate and environment action plan, including water, air, forest, and habitat restoration. I'd be open to some bullets for specificity, but I actually like the high level fo focus here um, that I think we are doing a lot of work that our city manager can fill, you know, like set, such as shoreline restoration for um, walkways and waterways that would fill into environmental elements that, that fit um, in here. But I, I'm open to other ideas. Okay, Karina and then Deborah. I, I'm fine with what um, Council Member O'Kane uh, is recommending. I'd also like a bullet point and I would want to put, you know, the comprehensive um, integrated pest and um, vegetation management plan because it's reducing uh, toxic chemicals and fits underneath this umbrella. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't quite get all of that. I think there's a little bit of a breakup there. <clears throat> I said, I'd like to uh, have a bullet point there. Right. Um, so I support Council Member O'Kane's suggestion, uh, but I would want to make sure that we you know, put in the comprehensive integrated uh, pest and vegetation management plan because it's uh, reducing toxic chemicals and um, gearing towards policy uh, tracking and um, transparency. Okay, so add the, the pest yeah. management it, plan. It just, right, right. Deborah. Yeah, yeah I, I would, I, I have a slight modification. I, I actually don't think we have a plan yet. So I, I really want to develop a plan. <laughs> um, and I think that is the first step. Um, I guess I'm okay with continue focus. I don't feel like that's sharp enough uh, for a one year goal. Um, so I, I, my preference, but I could be overridden, um, would be to keep the develop because that's clear. Um, and I think it could be phrased as climate action and environmental stewardship plan. Um, and then with the, with the commas of adding the, uh, pest and vegetation management, um, in the, in the list of commas, because that would be part of an environmental stewardship plan. Um, I do. That, that, yeah. I'm trying to recall exactly what we agreed to in regards to council member files, um, pest and vegetation management plan when we spoke yesterday. I thought we were going to fold that under something else. And yeah, I'm not sure if calling it out here specifically kind of fits with what we agreed to yesterday. Um, but I, again, my memory is a little fuzzy on exactly what we agreed to yesterday on that. So one of the things I wanted to point out, and, and, and you can do it either way, but I want to be careful that, and, and it's coming to you, Rob, in here in a second, I want to be careful that we don't load under one goal, a monster set of, and I'm not saying you are, but I want to raise the question, because if you add, develop a pest management plan to that, and that ends up being a body of work, it's huge, and on top of that, the other stuff that you're doing, Typically what you've done in the past, even though it might fit under the environmental umbrella or wherever, you've made these goals be standalone because you've recognized that one of the things we're trying to do is inform our budgeting process. Now, I'm not saying that's the case here. I don't know. But if it looks like a big body of work, in addition to that, I, I just am a little concerned about what I call priority loading. So we start loading a bunch of stuff up and all of a sudden you've just, so I don't know that. Uh, Rob um, on this? And then Karina. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the climate action plan is going to come up with a, a list of things to work on and um, pest management would be one of those probably. And so do you want to call out one of those now? Or there might be other things that come out of the climate action plan that might might want to work on sooner. Um, so I, I'm I'm not in favor of one possible outcome of the climate action plan yet, not at this point. Karina and then Melanie. Yeah, when I brought this um, 
uh, comprehensive integrative um, pest and vegetation management plan uh, to Rob's attention. We, we have a philosophy in, in Camor, so it's, <sighs> you don't have policy guiding it and you don't have required reporting. But um, he did say it was, it'd probably be very doable because they already track a, a bunch of things there. Uh, the only thing that's not really present is a, a tiered list, chemical list of use. And um, he, he thought it was something that we wouldn't be too difficult to, to pull out. The only difference is um, if we consider policy, um, I provided a several example um, leading policies in our state, and that be the, the work um, as well as you know reporting into the web page. Nigel, then Rob. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like we're getting a little off track debating what we already talked about yesterday around around this plan that we there was general consensus around, um, and we're getting away from what we should be discussing right now, which is where it falls if and where it falls in the priorities. Not debating the pluses or minuses to the particular plan. So I would hope that we would stick to that so we can get this done quickly. Okay, well said, Rob, and then Melanie. Um, on this, I'm sure you wreck it, wreck it. I, I want to make sure you had a chance to react to that, and then Melanie. So. Council member files recalling a conversation we had and she's recalling what she thinks I said. Um, but what I thought I told her was that we'd be happy to um, come back with a report that shows you what we're doing. But as far as like revamping how we do pest management, no, that's not in our work plan right now. But if you want us to be transparent and show you what we're doing now when it comes to pest and weed control, Happy to report that at your request. But revamping and doing a comprehensive integrated plan, not in our work plan right now. Okay. Melanie. Um, I just I just wanted to say that I'm comfortable with a few of the edits that were suggested. Uh, develop a Kenmore climate and environment stewardship plan, including, including air, forest, and habitat restoration. With with the understanding, I know that our city, folk, when we're talking habitat restoration, that is inclusive of salmon habitat restoration, which I, I'm sure it is. I'm just saying it out loud to make sure there's mutual understanding. Um, and I trust that, you know, I, I, I think that the integrated comprehensive vegetation management plan can be incorporated into our in climate and environmental stewardship plan as our city manager stated. Um, so I'm, I recognize the importance and value of the presentation that council member filed brought forward yesterday and our, what I recall, we all were not shake our heads and we're understanding of the importance of this, so. Karina, then I wanna to come to Michael's version of a point of order. Karina. Yes, uh, thank you. Well, I was, you know, I, when we were talking about Green New Deal yesterday, um, I thought we would be bringing a few years in under that discussion for today. But I was redirected and I'm, I'm, I, I'm trying to swim with this thought. Uh, but technically, I just want to point out, because um, it was pointed out to me, that Kimmore does not have a legal, legal forest. We have wooded lands. Um, I'm some... sorry, it's kind of breaking up for me. Our, <laughs> yeah, what was that? I didn't catch it. I'm sorry. We don't have a any legal forest in in Kenmore. It's we have woodlands. Um, so if you want to, I just think our our we should be accurate. Um, because we can't be working on protecting our forests if we don't actually have a forest, even though it can be perceived that we have areas that look like forests. It's just oh, what, so you'd replace forests with woodlands. I'm totally that's fine. right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joe, are you okay with that? Because <laughs> you, I think you participated in making sure forest was in this the, the time we put that in there. Yeah, I think it um, makes no difference whether it's uh, woodland or forest. I like forest because forest sounds to me thicker, larger, healthier, 
and uh, better than a woodland. There's no, there's no legal um, aspect to this whatsoever. There's no, uh, it's not a legal definition. I like forest because it's aspirational. We're trying to think of, yeah, I'd like to have a big old forest as opposed to woods. Okay, so we'll leave it in. Uh, in this there's a difference though, because if you're applying for grants, we don't have a forest. We, it sounds nicer forested area zoo, but this came up with a grant application process this year that a resident brought to us and we didn't qualify because we don't have forests. Okay. Joe wants to leave it in. He was an initial sponsor at a time before my recommendation we leave it in. I want to go back to past management. Typically, I'm not hearing consensus on including that under here. And at this juncture, what I'm hearing is that if it, it, it is likely to come out as an element of the action plan, and, and then if that happens, that will be stated. Now, to you, Karina, so I'm hearing your colleagues say, I don't wanna put that in there right now. Mm -hmm. But you, what you can say when we get to round three is, I'm gonna nominate as a standalone, independent goal, pest management plan, that's within, that's within our process, and it'll go up against everything else if, if that's something you would choose to do. And that's how we've done it in the past over and over. So um, that's what I'm hearing at this juncture, okay? All right, uh, goal number four, which is actually six now, implement the walkways and waterways projects that Stan, or any modifications? None, okay. Uh, number six now, which becomes number, do I have this right, seven? So we've eliminated five. Yeah, support, you're right. Support bus rapid transit on 522, is that still that, in? That went under another one. That went under the, um, what is now number three. So actually, oh, no, we're back on. That's BRT. That's BRT. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So now number uh, seven is back to being number seven. There you go. <laughs> right. I like it when life becomes easier. Um, number seven: economic development. Uh, any changes to this that you'd like to make, Deborah? Yeah, I had I I I've thought about this one a little bit because I I also had the same reaction as Deputy Mayor Herbig to number nine, um, and I I I'm thinking about how to put those together in something that is timely. The the reason number nine was on there was I don't know if you remember we had that big presentation about the community survey and it became obvious that the community. Um, you know, was not informed about what was happening. So I'm trying to bring those together. So conceptually, my idea is promote growth and development in Kenmore and then have a couple bullets, you know, the implementing the economic development plan. But to me, that's very vague. So I wouldn't have that, um, you know, things like you could have the attracting new businesses and support. I mean, to me, those are all very vague. Um, I, you know, I'd like something like actively engage property owners in downtown to create a viable walkable downtown. I, I guess I'd like this one to be more concrete. Okay. Um, so I'm open to ideas. Those were my thoughts. Okay. Nigel? Um, just a small actual copy edit thing here. I would like to, where to go? In the fourth bullet point, um, I don't think image needs to be uppercase. It's a small thing, but it bugs me. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any other discussions before I come back to Deborah's uh, suggestion and get get specific with it? Um, I, I'm going to have some. I'm formulating something. So if we can come back, I, I think I have a bullet to add here. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not all the way there yet. Okay. Um, so, Deborah. Let's go line by line, or, or do you have some language that you want to propose for your colleagues that would encompass what you were trying to do and that and therein give them a chance to modify, react, yay, nay, all that? Yeah, um, so I actually start with the language that's in nine, 
okay. um, and just start with the middle of that, promote growth and development in Kenmore. And then the bullets, when you, when, what we mean by that are <laughs> specifically mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. actively engage property owners in downtown to create a viable walkable downtown. I mean, that's too many downtowns, but you know, the, the idea is there. <laughs> so could you say actually engage property owners actively, to develop? Actively engage, actively. Right, engage. actively engage property owners to? In, in downtown, oh, well, in downtown to create a viable walkable downtown. It's, it's really a, a concerted focus on downtown property owners, like get them on board with the vision. That's, that's, that's the thing <laughs> in okay. my head, that is a, a concrete thing that I think we could do more on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Well, I, I actually think advanced public access to the water is already covered because we're, we got waterways and walkways. So I would so pull it off. Um, okay. I'd like to keep that third bullet. I think that is the essence of the economic development plan. So I don't know that we need to perseverate more on the economic development plan. But keep uh, attract new businesses and so forth. Yeah, the third bullet, attract new businesses and support exit. I mean, I think that is that is the economic development plan. So that right. is it in a nutshell. And then the last one with the lowercase i, <laughs> promote the image of Kenmore. Um, you know, I think that's fine to stay. So I, yeah. So that those are my thoughts. And so okay. seven seven's tagline essentially goes away. Okay. But, but I could okay. be argued out of that because I think there, might, there is some more in the economic development plan that isn't covered in what I just said. Right, right, right. And we'll go back and forth here. This is where it kind of feels, you know, yeah. But David and then Melanie. So I, I was thinking uh, instead of that first actively encourage uh, businesses in downtown, could you say actively encourage businesses in the central core to create a more walkable downtown. That gets rid totally. of the downtown repetitive nature. Yeah, totally. Okay. Ellie. Yeah, I, 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 I like these edits. I, I kind of get into a little bit of a framing and I, I realize sometimes I take a language to it too high of a level thinking it's broader than the specific nature it is. So please forgive me when I just recognize I do that sometimes and then I can focus back down. So sure. um, like I think economic development plan fairly broadly, but I do think economic focus on economic development is really an important language. So I'm comfortable with kind of focus on economic development with an emphasis on all of the things that we've discussed. There's some language around the job creation being that foundation for job creation. And I think there's maybe a plan or so, I don't know what that is, but I, there's something about job creation related to such things as the Green New Deal, like Karina brought forward, opportunities for us to say, what is it that Kenmore wants to be when it comes to job creation? You guys know where I land, it's green jobs, but I'm okay with wherever we go. I think some focus on job creation in those words is, is kind of a nice, would be nice to include, but I, I, I see it's included in attract new businesses, but I think that job creation might be stronger language. Okay, so uh, Karina. So I, I do appreciate job creation because it's one thing attracting businesses and they, they have hires, but we can go a step farther if we're saying, you know, hey, city manager, we need you to uh, work in some contracted jobs for, for people who, who reside in Kenmore, we need to enhance uh, um, employability, right? Um, bringing jobs here. Um, so, I think that's kind of where we're going, whether the jobs and green new, um, green jobs, either way it works. So support. So the friendly amendment, oh, Deborah? Yeah, I just, I want to tag on to what uh, Councilman Bro Kane said. I, I think your point's well taken. Instead of promote growth and development, uh, promote, I mean, specifically say economic development. 
Um, so promote growth and economic development. And, th and then the rest, it falls from that, but yeah. Thank you. So the, the reword would be promote growth and econo economic development, lose plan, drop the plan, yes. drop the plan with an emphasis on the following key points. And those would be attract new businesses and support attract and, su and support existing businesses, promote the image of Kenmore, little I, and create a foundation for job creation or some words like that. And also uh, create a vibrant walkable downtown. Yeah, you missed kind of the key point, which was the actively engaged property owners in the core to create oh, you a want that? You want that to remain? Okay. Well, that's part of the create the viable walkable downtown. I mean, that's that's the, the tying the vision to what the action is for now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that, that's a bullet. The others will be a bullet. We'll start with prom promote growth, economic development with an emphasis on actively engage, attract new businesses, promote the image, foundation for job creation, in a vibrant, walkable downtown. You want that to be in still. Okay. Can you say the list again? I think you've repeated it now. So and I can also go through my iteration if it's helpful. Yeah, that thank would you. be helpful. Please. Yeah. Okay, here's 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 what mine says: promote growth and economic development in Canmore with an emphasis on the following key points. These are sub bullets. One: actively engage property owners in the central core to create a viable, walkable downtown. Point two, attract new businesses and support existing businesses. Point three, promote the little eye image of Kenmore. And point four, I need a rephrasing on this, uh, some, something creating a foundation for job growth or I need, I need the wording for this last bullet. I, I might recommend rolling job creation into attract new businesses and support existing businesses. Create a foundation for job creation and support existing businesses. I think, or you know, something along. Um, we could ask uh, include attract new businesses, but create a foundation for job creation, including attracting new businesses and mm. supporting existing businesses. That's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay. So re repeat that bullet one more time. How you want it phrased? Uh, create a foundation for job creation, including attracting new businesses and support for existing businesses. Perfect. Got it. So, okay. David. Yeah, I'm just concerned that this becomes way too wordy. It's always been concise uh, in the past and I would like to try to keep it as concise as possible. Sometimes to be clear, you have to say things. <laughs> <laughs> Rob? Um, I'm referring to this document that you adopted in 2018. And uh, it, has, it has four goals. So I um, don't know if you want to, I don't know how this, I don't know what preempts what, uh, but goal one is establish Kenmore's image by promoting its high quality of life in many assets. Number two, support existing businesses and pursue opportunities to expand employment. Number three, create a multi-use, vibrant, and walkable downtown. And number four, advance the community's connection to the waterfront. So this is an adopted document that we're following and implementing. Um, so does, does your council goal want to be different than that? I mean, you, you can if you want, but I'm just throwing this out there. Deborah. I think the th first three of what you said are exactly the three bullets yep. that we have. Um, and the fourth one is waterways and walkways. So, I mean, I, I feel like we're a hundred percent aligned with, with that plan. But for, um, for my coworkers sanity and, uh, an ability to, for predictable, you know, can we, can we go with your, at least your top three? that's already been adopted? Well, they did. I, I think we just did. I, I guess, can somebody maybe 
say better what I thought. I thought that's what we just said. Anastasia, why don't you reiterate? I'm coming to you in a second, Melanie. Just for clarification, what we're really trying to answer is did the, at least the top three bullets land, I thought, I heard, land squarely on the, the points that Rob was making out of that report. Could you give us those? Yeah, this, this is where we are so far. Promote growth and economic development in Kenmore with an emphasis on the following key points. Number one, actively engage property owners in the central core to create a viable, walkable downtown. Two, create a foundation for job creation, including attracting new businesses and supporting existing businesses. Number three, promote the image of Kenmore. My recommendation would be just to use the goals that you've already established in your strategy. Okay. If you want to leave the waterfront, you can. What do you think of that, Melanie and then Nigel? I, what, I, what I appreciate about what uh, our city manager brought forward for us is that we do have this already documented and it aligns with our mayor's recommendation to keep this concise. So I like implement, continue, or continue to implement the economic development plan and we don't even need bullets because we have a plan and it keeps it clear. And we know what that means because we have a document that we can refer to. So I think oh. it's, I mean, I love my, I love special words. And so I like the extra bullets and so I'm okay if we do add them. Um, but I just wanted to share that I was, I, it's amazing the good work we've done in the past. Okay, Nigel and Deborah. Yeah, Council Member O'Kane just stole exactly what I was about to say. We already have a plan and frankly, we could take out those bullets and uh, be a little bit more concise. Deborah. Yeah, I would be okay with that, except it doesn't, it's not specific to what a one-year goal would be. So, I mean, I, yes, all of those things fall under the economic development plan, but how would we know when we got there? So one of the burdens we've not imposed on your priorities is that they have to be done within a year. We've never done that. We, what you do every year is reevaluate and revise because there's a recognition that you can select in 522 over the years has been one of the great examples of that. These are projects that think are just going to go on for a period of time for what have you. So I, I just wanted to say, I don't think, I hope, I don't want you to feel burdened by this having to be a one year deal. Okay. Nigel. Yeah, I mean, many of these many of these things on here are multi-year things that we've been chipping away at for my entire time on council. So I don't see any conflict in having multi-year priorities on here. Rob. And, and to put council member Shrebnik at ease, you know, um, you would specifically want us to go to town, so to speak, on these downtown property owners and we can make that a clear agreement out of this um, out of this retreat, but I'm hearing you loud and clear, and I'm I'm not going to slack off on that this year. I promise you. Yeah, I'm I'm cool. I I I get it. I mean, okay. and and I think I think it was remarkable that I mean it wasn't remarkable because that's where the origin of this one was <laughs> that it was totally aligned with the economic development plan. Um, but I, th I think our, our work today was not also in vain because we basically said, are these still what we want to do? And the answer was yes. So, yeah. well, it, it, not only for that reason, but what, what Rob just said, because so there's, there's information that comes to staff out of this discussion very clearly. So, so what I'm hearing is you're kind of, you've evolved to a place that says implement the economic development plan. And that's that. Okay. Going to number eight, foster and create welcoming, diverse, affirming communities, celebrating culture and fun. Deborah. I, th I think what I heard earlier is that the vast majority, and I would agree, the vast majority of this is covered under the, the DEI work. Um, I do wanna just hold out and I'm, I'm willing to have it compete, <laughs> foster and create fun. That's your prerogative, and you can do that by yourself here, and it could compete. David? 
Yeah, I, I, it's fun. I don't want fun to get lost. Fun has always been a part of what we do, and um, it, it's important on many different levels. So I, I don't want to lose it. Okay. Any other comments? Nigel and then Melanie. Yeah, no, I, I think we need to call it fun somewhere in there. So I, I'm with Councilmember Shrevenick and Mayor Baker on this. Okay, Melanie. Sorry, it took me a minute to unmute. Um, I'm okay where it lands. I want to share just a slightly separate perspective. Why not put the lens on diversity, equity, and inclusion with the fun element? Ultimately, this whole item, which I love, is what diversity, equity, and inclusion is all about. In the end, life is more joyful and fun with diversity, equity, and inclusion. We are addressing things that are hard, but I also recognize we want to have fun on the list. So I, but I just, I just, I just see that the the ultimate goal is fun with this. But I might have taken it too high. So thank you, Nigel. Yeah, I actually think fun transcends any one of these topics. I think, you know, fun for Kenmore has been everything from, you know, the work we've done in the town square to the little um, heron feet that you find randomly in the sidewalks have been put in. And not all of it folds into DEI. I mean, yes, I totally understand where, where Councilman Rokin was, was coming from there, and I agree with her. But I think fun transcends all of that. And frankly, it should be something that our staff is thinking about um, as an additional lens as they do work. You know, we everything doesn't have to be dead serious. There is a place to allow for some fun to, you know, in, in, in almost all of our work here. Um, so I, I think calling that out specifically is great. Joe, and then Melanie. And I know it goes without saying that everybody here takes the work of diversity, equity, and inclusion very seriously, of course. I think that to include fun with it or somehow part of it um, might tend to detract from the seriousness of DEI. Okay, interesting. Mallory? Yeah, I, I hear that. I guess, I guess when we've been talking about using diversity, equity, and inclusion as a lens through which we bring to perform all of our work with, with this, I really do love this line, so I'm fine if it's separate. But I, I really think Fostering and creating a welcoming, diverse, and affirming community, celebrating culture and fun is what DEI is genuinely about. But I'm okay wherever we place it. I, I, I just, I genuinely think this is ultimately the goal of diversity, equity, and inclusion work. And we are going to be using this lens for everything that we do. And those items that Councilmember Marshall mentioned, I believe it was, are built into that. Um, but I'm okay where it lands. I just want to be respectful. Thank you. Okay, Karina. I just want to help um, kind of clarify where you find the fun in diversity and equity and inclusion. It is uh, formally called family and community engagement and it's arts and culture uh, in this framework. Uh, and that's the the lanes they swim through and how you you grow together and find the fun, you know, because it is fun, it is exciting, and it is exploring. Um, so that's how that works um, formally throughout the process of DEI work. And that's how it rolls out, whether you're a school district or a county or a university uh, for that matter. Um, but I'm willing to just roll with it if uh, we have to. I just really want us to think about looking through, looking at diversity and equity like a microscope, looking through the lens that we focus and fine tune our work through. Um, it's so important uh, to, to have quality development. So um, that's, okay. that's it. Okay. Um, so I've heard discussions kind of gone all over, but the options now are to leave language like this in here or roll it into the DEI area or have it stand alone. And never since you brought it up, what's your preference, stand alone or roll oh, it in? Oh, stand alone, for sure. Yeah, I, okay. think, it, I think it is, right. uh, can certainly be, a, it's, it's part of DEI, but it is way beyond that. 
So okay, so could you just propose a, a, a quick yeah, phrase? Foster and create fun. Period. Okay. Yeah. The fun goal. All right. Um, my notes say that we help me with this. That number nine. I go back and forth. Is that still in, or did we fold that into the number seven? Engage and educate community on growth and development in Kenmore. Deborah. I was trying to, but I was not successful given the direction that we went because I don't think we have any plank in the economic development plan, but I'd maybe look to city manager on this about engaging and educating the community. So I hate to have it be a standalone thing, but we certainly heard in the survey, and that's why it's on here, <laughs> that um, you know, there's a huge disconnect here um, with our community. So I don't, short of having it on a goal, which I don't really like, I don't know how to, I don't know where it hangs anymore. <laughs> yeah, so um, the more land that gets built out, um, the more, um, and the more, you know, growth and everything that happens here and the more valuable our, our land becomes, um, the more developers are going to be trying to develop um, difficult land that that they wouldn't have tried to develop 20 years ago. But now that everything's getting built out, they're going to be trying to build the stuff that's encroaching on residential neighborhoods more and or taking residential neighborhoods and turning them into townhomes and, and all that stuff. And and yeah, when we do survey people, one of the some of the top com top complaints we get are traffic and growth, and growth actually moved up quite a bit in the last survey as one of the top things. Um, so I think it is important to explain to people why they're about to, about to get a bunch of townhomes moving into their neighborhood, um, and what drives that. And I think we I think we did put an article in one of the newsletters about it this. Don't quote me on that. I, my memory's vague, but um, we can definitely, you know, write up some material, have it on our website, put it in a newsletter, that type of thing, to explain why are you getting a bunch of townhomes next door. <laughs> um, okay, Deborah. I think we're going to actually have a, a big community engagement effort as we deal with the missing metal. So I now now that I'm thinking about this more, particularly given what city manager said, I think I I, I do want to leave it on there. Just sort of keep it the way it is. Okay. And vote on it. Okay. So number nine stays in, and it actually is the number nine. Number ten went away. Number eleven is your Lake Point goal. You want to change the word? Just stay, have it hold, hold tight. Any any adjustments, Melanie? I, I think the mayor may may have had his hand up first. Oh, didn't see it. Okay, no, no. Um, I'm comfortable with where it is, but I think we have been talking about maybe we want to um, revisit the long term vision for Lake Point. I'm not sure if that's the language we would want. Um. Something to that effect. So um, I just had to put it out there. I'd, maybe I'd like to hear from our city manager if a change in the language would be useful. Yeah, I'm wrestling with that idea. Um, I, I think a council goal should be to change the name or at least get rid of the E on the end. <laughs> Yeah, I wish you would because it always gets underlined in red when I write it. So it's like, okay. Um, yeah, putting ease on the end of words was a 90s thing. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> uh, trying to bring some fun into the meeting. So. Yeah, I know. That's good. Um, I'm, I'm fine with what it is. The, the biennium budget document uh, that you've adopted speaks more to what we intend to do. Um, but if you guys want to talk about the revisioning, we can. In this well, case. they did talk about it, and I thought that. Well, I mean. Right, Look, David. Yeah, can can we actually get rid of the E on a, on the name of a property that we don't own? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could buy it. Right. Let's do it. 
Um, I think I, I'm trying to recall earlier the yesterday's conversation about the vision around and and you somewhere along the line I thought I heard council members say gee I'd like to revisit that vision and 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 then I thought I heard you say Rob well we actually have a process and plan and way to actually do that was I in the was I in that meeting yeah okay okay back to this do you want to change any words on here I'm hearing no probably. I'll look to the code, but I, I'm fine. Okay, leave it as it is. All right. All right, so we end up with 10 goals existing. Now we go to step three. Are any of you going to nominate new goals? Oh, I'm loving this. Nigel. Sorry, what's fun on here? Yes. It's the okay, new number, number eight. That's the number eight, okay. Fun. Sorry, I was looking at a, I was keeping notes on things and I missed that that's what eight transformed into. Thank you. Let me, can I email this to everyone just for now or should we do that later with the addition of any new goals? Well, what I wanted to do, well, I, I called for the question, got no nominations for new goals. Uh, so, Angela. Sorry, not to throw a wrench into things, but um, well, it seemed like there was a significant amount of work related to public safety improvements, you know, keeping an eye on the um, on some of the changes with police reform and the uh, safe places, etc. So I wonder if we want to call that out as a goal. I don't know how to, I don't have suggested wording, maybe council member. Council member O'Kane might have some suggested well, wording. And, and to a point of order, this is the point in time where any one of you as individuals, in this case you, Angela, can say, I'd like to have a goal that addresses that, added to the competitive list, if you will. And we can talk about it a little bit to get a sense of phraseology and at least the important concepts that you'd like to see included. That's exactly where we are right now. And I would... Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you, yeah. So in that case, then I would like to propose that we make some goal related to the public safety improvements. Okay, Nigel. Uh, yeah, and I actually really appreciate Councilmember Kugler for bringing that up because um, I think that's a really good catch. Um, I might propose something along the lines of you know continue work to redefine public safety, or I don't know. I'm just trying to think how we word this out. Um, with a call out to engaging in the county's processes um, around the redefinition of public safety and the and the um, deputies guild contract or something like that. Okay, I'm making a couple notes here. Other uh, comp, uh, Karina. I you just want to call it. Uh, uh, police reform, a county process, and, and then um, the safe place. We could even put those under DEI uh, because it, they would fit in that scope. Okay, when that comes up, here's what we do in the past. If 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 the count if the sponsoring person in this case Angela, it comes back to you. A proposal has been made by one of your colleagues to fold this under another goal. If you want to do that, you can say, I agree, I'm willing to do that. And it can be folded under. Uh, others may want to nominate a, 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 another goal that does not do that. And here's why this is important. Or you can say, no, I don't. I want it to be standalone because it's going to need to compete against the others. And it also has expressive value. So sometimes what you lose is the expressive value of a goal when you fold under. Mm. You can't, no, not always, but you can. Um, and the other thing is it's your prerogative as, a, as an individual council member going, you know what, just, just, you just saw that happen. Deborah just did that. She was, you know what, I want fun on the list. I, this is what I'd like it to be. And, and, and so you can say that. So that's usually how we've handled the fold in uh, idea when it's proposed. Nigel? And then yeah, I, I, I would actually, not sure if I would want it defined as uh, police reform. I think redefining public safety 
is kind of the broader topic that we should be examining. Police reform is definitely part of that. Um, but I don't know, I, I would get away from um, having the top line of that be in, involve police reform per se, but more redefining how we approach public safety. Thanks, David. David and then Melanie. Yeah, I, I would like to see the, the redefined public policy. I think that that goal that Angela has suggested uh, really needs to stand on its own uh, and not be folded anything else and, and lose focus. Okay, Melanie. I, I want to thank uh, Councilmember Cooler for bringing this very important item to our to our list. I also agree with the approach using the term public safety because we also have to be sensitive to the impact of our language. Because, um, um, you know, I, that, that, that's why. Uh, police reform is very strong and it can inflame people not, and what we're really saying is supporting our officers, creating a, a, an enhanced public safety environment, right? That's respectful to their needs and our community's needs. So that's that's where I support public safety as a language. Okay, and the word redefine as opposed to reform. Angela, back to you. What would you kind of like to see it roughly say? I'm not gonna put the burden of the precise language, but but please feel free to, to, to give us some thoughts in this area. And, and Nigel, back over to you too, because you've had some thoughts. So and, Angela? I'm sort of landing more along the lines of enhancing public safety. I don't know if it's if the scope of the work is large enough to say it's redefining it. Um, I'd welcome any other voices if that if if you think otherwise. But otherwise, enhancing public safety. Okay, Nigel. Yeah, I mean, I think either word works, and I think really whether it's redefined or enhanced has to do with how much work or how far the King County Council is willing to go with um, the work around amend Charter Amendment 6, right? If they could go very far and, you know, add all sorts of um, non-weapon carrying officers to deal with things and giving and broadening kind of the menu of things we could work on, or they could just focus in on police reform. I really don't know which direction the King County Council is gonna be going on this, so. Deborah. But I, yes, I agree with Deputy Mayor, but I also, I, I like enhance. Um, and I think we have a role beyond what the council's doing. For example, we funded more funding for radar um, and we're doing safe places. So I, you know, and I mean, those are a little examples, but I mean, I, I, I don't think it's just what the council's doing. So are, are there any so enhance public safety with a focus, I'm just throwing words out, with a focus on safe places. Uh, We're trying to be parsimony. Can we just, I think what I heard was enhance public safety. Yeah. Period. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And I can support that. That works. Beautiful. Enhance public safety. So that will be, I shuffle my papers. That would be goal number 11, right? And that's a new goal, enhance public safety. Okay. Any other, Melanie? I, I apologize for coming in late. I'm just curious as, for our city manager, is that too broad given the, um, you know, I, I just, the police reform aspect or, you know, I just want to know, is that too broad? Do we need to add more clarity to it? Because I like this brevity of it. But I wanted to check in with you. Well, I definitely know what it means given the context of the conversations we've had. Um, I often take these goals out into the public and um, show the public what we're doing. And so it, will the public know what that means? No. Uh, no, they won't. Yeah, I think a little bit more. Maybe maybe we can include just bullets, you know. I'm not sure the best language on, on the um, police reform language or work with King County, you know, what actually we had some language in our agenda yeah. that we can stop it. You know, um, public safety, county process, co police contract. And Could you say something like this, enhance public safety with a focus on police services? And that then would cause you to start, I mean, or you can list them all out, I guess. I like that. 
I also wrote one and one other iteration is um, continue to work with our King County partners to enhance public safety. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Deborah. I think if our test is that the rest of the public understands exactly what each of these are, we have failed <laughs> because none of these are understandable at that level. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I guess I don't think that's a test. You don't think that's a burden we should put on your goals? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Angela? Yeah, I agree with Council Member Shrebnik. The same could be said for the economic development plan. Anyone who's not familiar with the details wouldn't necessarily know. And in this case, it's broader than just working with King County. You know, the radar program, safe place, police, um, possible police reform, and the transparency of our reporting. There are a lot of bullet points under that. And I, you know, if we go back to what we were talking about earlier, which is just to keep it concise, like it's really enhancing public safety and we're going to do all these different things under that. Okay. No, I do. I'm good with that. Okay. I'm hearing you land on enhanced public safety. Okay. Any other new goals? Okay. You have 11. Can you give us uh, have you take a break. I want to caucus with the team that's been supporting this behind the scenes and then coming forward, Anastasia in particular, to talk about our plan to, of how we're going to get this to you. And then our next step, the favorite thing you love to do, paired comparison. But we're doing it with a small number of goals, so I'm very optimistic we'll get through this quickly. So take five minutes or so, 10 if you need it, and we'll be right back. And oh, Melanie, yes? Two five kickoff. Pardon me. But it's it's almost kickoff. Is what I was saying. Right. Yeah, okay, we can do this. Actually, we can do this. All right, all right. Five minutes. Let me get with Anastasia. I keep it fun. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Anastasia. I'm here. What do you need? Okay. So I'm not sure you need to do a big mail out. Let me try something here. I've been making notes. Correct me on this. Goal number one is respond to the pandemic. We don't have to wordsmith this for what we're getting ready to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Goal number two mm -hmm. is DEI. Goal, yep. number, goal number three is multi-modal Transportation. Uh -huh. Okay. Goal number four mm -hmm. is affordable housing stock. Uh, yes. Okay. Goal number five, and I want to say it this way. Uh, climate action plan and stewardship Does that work yep goal number six is walkways and waterways uh -huh. goal number seven is implement economic development plan mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just writing this down because I'm just going to use my little pad right here. Number eight is foster and create fun. Or foster, yeah, and create, I guess it's the same thing, fun. Okay. Number nine is educate community on economic development. 10 is mm -hmm. Lake Point. Mm -hmm. And finally, number 11 mm -hmm. is public safety. Okay. What I will do 
is, and I'll call for the question, one against two, one against three, one against four. Um, Can I I'll, email these out, you think, so that they know? Excuse me? Should I email these out to everyone so that they know? Uh, yes, you can do that, and uh, because typically we have it on a flip chart, right, that mm -hmm. you can see. Mm -hmm. What I, I'm just going over what I think we agreed the process would be for our team. Okay. Uh, when I do that, I'll count the votes. I'll count them, and then I'll say four for pandemic. I'm just making this up right now. Three mm -hmm. for DEI. Okay, pandemic against multimodal. And I'll give you the number for one and the other. And so you write the number for both down. Oh, I see. Okay. So what happens is on every comparison, every number, every goal gets a number, including, including zero. Go ahead. So, so what happens is that, that and, and what you will do is with every comparison so if, if we do one against two and everybody wants one it's mm -hmm. seven for one zero for for dei Got and, it. Then, and we keep track of all of those even if it's zero so okay. it's literally a vote one against the other and if you can keep that kind of going i don't know where rob is but if rob could also keep a tally and then the three of us will come back because i'm going to watch the council i'm not going to actually i'll try to keep the tally but uh do you see what i'm saying i got you okay and then what we'll do is we'll give them another quick break and and they're kind of they're pretty practiced at this that they'll they'll get going on it uh we'll, i'll take a break we'll take a break we'll add it up We'll tell them the results. We're not going to worry about the word smithing. We've done 99% of that. And I think we, we, we're done at that juncture, unless there's other things that people want to say or what have you. So are you good, Anastasia, on, on our plan? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to track it and then send you the tallies, the total total tallies. Right, and I'll watch too. We're not going to. Uh, we will not continue forward until we're comfortable. We've got the number, the numbers. So, uh, and I'll do it as well. But my main focus will be on the council and and vote county, really. Okay, sounds good. Okay, as soon as they're back, we'll be ready to rock. I'm so pleased. The number's small enough. Uh, you get a lot of goals. This thing can get tedious. It can get tedious, but it does get the job done. Well, and the other thing it does uh, is it's the only process I use in terms of getting rankings for goals, priorities, that actually approximates your real world. Because a lot of times you have to make a decision between two really important things, but because you can't do it all. And so, um, and you'll see it on the council members' faces because they're actually having to actually vote two ideas that they really care and love about, but they have to actually make that decision today in terms of just setting the, the numbers. So uh, I've always liked it. So as soon as Joe and Karina are back, we'll be, hey Joe, all right, we'll be ready to go. I think we underestimate how much um, sports is uh, giving people a sense of community in a pandemic time. Oh man. Can you imagine? It's that feeling like that, that you can still be part of a group or a collective hobby and that's probably. Are we gonna see the goals somehow or get emailed them or? Um, I just, oh, let's see, did it not go through yet? Give it a second. I emailed them out. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Tell me if you don't see it in the next little bit here. I'm working on your... Just popped in my inbox. What about you, Councilmember Shrebnik? And what I'm going to do, like I have in the past, I have a MyPad, sort of shorthand words, right? I use words like respond to pandemic versus DEI, right? And so we're not... 
but you'll have that up there more fully and then uh, we'll be ready to go as soon as we get uh, Karina back. Okay. So to just to go over quickly what our process is going to be, uh, Anastasia has emailed to you, uh, I think, a, ver a version of the goals. We have 11 of them. I've shorthanded them in terms of phrases, as we've done in the past, because we're going to cause them to vote against each other. And the process is this. I will go through, each, each goal gets, gets compared to the other, and you are literally voting one or the other. And we record the votes for both. So if three vote for number one and two or, or, or four vote for number two, those numbers get recorded. And at the end, we add them up. And most always, it's kind of interesting. You'll see a break. You'll, you'll see the numbers here. So that's our process. Are there any? Joe. And it's which one is more important than the other. Is that right? That's correct. It's one you're actually voting for in that immediate comparison. Because when each goal gets real, gets compared to every other goal, and so the first one, one through eleven, is the longest one. Then it's then it's two through the remainder, three through the remainder, and so on. It cascades down. So the last comparison is Lake Point versus public safety. Now, you know, there we go. And I wanted to kind of go over that again. A lot of us have done this together, but others may not be quite as familiar. So I want to make sure we're good. Is everybody good? Okay. Here we go. All right, the first comparison, pandemic, respond to pandemic versus DEI. All of those for pandemic, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Five for pandemic, two for DEI. Pandemic versus multimodal transportation. All of those for pandemic, raise your hand. Four for pandemic. Three for multimodal transportation. Sorry, could you, could you take that vote one more time? I thought there were five. Yeah. Okay. Number one, it'd be pandemic versus multimodal transportation. All those for pandemic, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. So five for pandemic, two for multimodal, okay? And we, did, we do, did we do pandemic and DEI? We did. We, we did, but I got five to two, but I wonder if it was supposed to be six to one. I got five to two as well. Okay. okay, we'll do it again. No problem. Hold on. Uh, respond to pandemic versus DEI. All those for pandemic. One. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Okay. You good? All right. Pandemic versus affordable housing. All for pandemic. Raise your hand. One two, three for pandemic, four for affordable housing. Okay. Pandemic versus climate action, all those for pandemic. One, two for pandemic, five for climate action. Pandemic versus walkway and waterways, all those for pandemic, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Pandemic, two for walkway and waterways. Pandemic versus implement economic development, all for pandemic, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, one. Pandemic versus create fun, all those for pandemic, raise your hand. One, Two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Seven. Oh, sorry. Seven. Seven. 
and then zero, you put, we'll put a zero under fun. Oh, Don. Pandemic versus educate community on economic development. All those for pandemic, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Two for number nine. Pandemic versus Lake Point. All those for pandemic. One, two, three. Four. Four. Thank you. Three for Lake Point. And the final comparison that one gets to have is pandemic versus public safety. All for pandemic. One, two. Two for pandemic. Five for public safety. Okay, starting with number two, oh, Rob. Um, I, I forgot to do this sooner, but can I make a plug for one goal? No. Am I too late? <laughs> well, I'm really reluctant. I work for you guys, so I'm reluctant to do that in the middle of voting. That's where I'm kind of. That's where I'm kind of going. Err. But it's up to you, Council. Do you want to hear the plug? You want? Oh, I hear no. Yes, I want to hear. Okay. As, as walkways and waterways, it's you might feel like it's on autopilot and we can check that box, but we've, it's still consuming a ton of resources and we can't screw it up. Um, we've got to get it right. Um, and because how well we do walkways and waterways might affect whether voters say yes to future things. And anyway, it's consuming a lot of resources and we can't screw it up. Melanie? Can, I, I can't recall how I voted. I thought I-, I, yeah, I we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to start all over. On, on the whole thing or just that one? The whole no, thing. No, the whole thing, I think. I, because I, we're gonna have to count backwards to figure out where those that number. I'm looking at my tally sheet. I, I'll turn to Anastasia. I, I'll have to go back and take a look at. I'm not sure which numbers. How many voted for what? Have we only done um, number one respond to pandemic? So it just right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's only so walkways and waterways has only been scored against pandemic so far. It has been yeah, let's correct. Just continue to. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean to start over. I just wanted to, and I, I apologize. I've been meaning to say this all morning. I just kept forgetting to say it. I, w I just recall I was on the fence on that one. So I'd be okay with a revote on that if everyone else is, because I want to make sure I'm solid and grounded on my vote on that. The problem I'm having, yeah. and maybe I should just count down then. Okay. One, two, three, but four. Five, so it'd be yep. one, two, three, it's four, five. So that comparison was five, two. Okay. So we can, I'll take off a, a five and the two, and we'll revote. Are you with me, Anastasia? Got it. I'm with you. Okay, five and a two comes off of my roster of numbers. The comparison is pandemic versus walkway and waterways. All those for pandemic, raise your hand. Three, and now it gets a four. Okay, we good? All right. The second comparison is DEI against the rest. Here we go, DEI versus multimodal transportation, all for DEI. One, two, three, four. Multimodal will be three. DEI versus affordable housing stock, all for DEI. Okay, seven, DEI is zero. Affordable housing is seven. DEI versus Climate Action Plan, all for DEI. DEI is four, Climate Action is three. DEI versus Walkway and Waterways, all for DEI. One, one two, three, 
four, five for DEI, two for walkway and waterway. DEI versus implement economic development, all for DEI. One, two, three, four, five, six. DEI versus fund. Oh, sorry, six and one for economic development. Correct. Okay. DEI versus fund, all for DEI. Seven, zero. DEI versus educate community on economic development, all for DEI. Six, one. DEI versus Lake Point, all for DEI. Six. One. DEI versus public safety, all for DEI. Five for DEI, two for public safety. Okay. Now we go multimodal against the rest. You ready? Almost. Okay. You good? Okay. Multimodal transportation against affordable housing, all for multimodal transportation. Raise your hand. Mm. <laughs> I know, Karina. One. Two. Six. Oh, two. Okay. Two. Five. Multimodal versus climate action plan, all against multi, all for a multimodal. One, two, three. Okay. Multimodal against walkway and waterway is all for multimodal. One, two, three, four. Multimodal versus economic development, all for multimodal. One, two, three, four, five. Two. Multimodal versus fun, all for multimodal. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Multimodal versus educate community on economic development, all for multimodal. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Multimodal versus Lake Point, all for multimodal. One, two, three, four, five, six. Multimodal versus public safety, all for multimodal. One, two. Okay. Up next, affordable housing. Ready? Affordable housing versus climate action, all for affordable housing. Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Two. Affordable housing versus walkway and waterways, all for affordable housing. One, two, three, four, five. Affordable housing versus implement economic development, all for affordable housing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I changed my for affordable housing, economic development would be one. Okay. Affordable housing versus fun, all for affordable housing. One, two, three, four, five. Affordable housing against economic, educate economic development, all for affordable housing. One, two, three, four, five. Six. 
one. Affordable housing versus Lake Point, all for affordable housing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Affordable housing versus public safety, all for affordable housing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Zero. Okay. Climate action's up next. Climate action against walkway and waterways, all for climate action. One, two, three, four. Climate action versus implement economic development, all for climate action. One, two, three, four, five, six. Climate action versus fun, all for climate action. One, two, three, four, five, six. Climate action versus educate on community development all for or community on economic development, all for climate action. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Zero. Climate action versus Lake Point, all for climate action. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Zero. Climate action versus public safety, all for climate action. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, up next, walkway and waterways. Ready? Walkway and waterways versus implement economic development, all for walkway and waterways. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, seven, make it seven. Oh, seven, zero. Walkway and waterways versus fun, all for walkway and waterways. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Joe, are you up? Let's yeah. do it again. What? Okay. Yep. Seven. Okay. Seven. Walkway and waterways versus educate on economic development. All for walkway and waterways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Walkway and waterways versus Lake Point. All for walkway and waterways. Two, three, four, five. Two, walkway and waterways versus public safety, all for walkway and waterways. One, two, three. Public safety is four. Okay, up next is implement economic development. We're getting down there, hang with me now. Economic development versus fun, all for economic development. One, two, three, four, five, six. Economic development versus educate on economic development. All for economic development. One, two, three, four, five, six. Economic development versus Lake Point. All for economic development. One, two, three, four. Economic development versus public safety, all for economic development. Zero? One. One. Oh, sorry. One. Six. Okay, up next is fun. Fun against everything else. You ready? Fun versus educate on economic development, all for fun. <laughs> Okay, hold, hold your hands up. I'm laughing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for fun. Educate. Okay. Fun versus Lake Point. All for fun. That's a zero versus seven. Fun versus public safety. All for fun. Zero, seven. Okay. Up next is educate on economic development. Ready? Educate on economic development versus Lake Point, all for educate. Zero. One. Seven. Oops, sorry. 
Okay, educate on economic development versus public safety, offer educate. Zero, seven. And the final comparison, thank you for hanging with me, Lake Point versus public safety, all for Lake Point. Zero, seven. We are finished with this part. Thank you so much. I know it's tedious. Take a break. We're gonna add these puppies up and then we'll come back and you can see the results. Okay, Anastasia. Let's How do some long? math. Pardon me? How long, Michael? Five? Uh, it takes at least five. Yeah, because you know it's numbers. I'm slow with numbers. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. How many do you have for uh, the pandemic? Hold on, hold on. I'm not even there. Okay. Um, hold on one second. Okay, one second. I almost feel like I need a calculator. Now my brain's mush. Yeah. Oh, you know what? The computer has a calculator. I was just about to say that. Duh. I'll let you add them up. Yeah. Okay, one second. I take it people don't like tape the game like we do. I don't know. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> we always just tape it. We never watch it in real time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I got 43. 33? 43. Yeah, me too. Okay. Um, you... Okay, next one, DEI. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me roll with it. Fifty. I got forty-seven. What do you have for the second comparison? Is that a seven or a two? Um, I can't tell which round of comparisons mine is. Mine's oh, okay. a different graph. We can take an average, or just we'll we'll go with yours. Or unless Rob's here, he could be the tiebreaker. Rob, you there? I'm here. Do you have the numbers down? No, I don't. I was. Uh, Why don't you do the others and see if it makes a difference? Yeah, exactly. Okay, are we on multimodal now? Go ahead. I'm still adding up DEI. You can just go ahead and add them. Okay. Yeah, I got 50 on number two. Yeah, me too. Okay. 
Would you get a three? Well done. A 39. I have 43. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn my video off and just tally all of them. Okay. And then we can compare. Okay. 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 So we just go down the with the raw scores one through eleven. Yeah, we can. Okay. 
And I didn't double check anything, so. But I think we we'll see what floats to the top and we can recheck if we need to. Okay, 40, I got 43 for number one. Right. 50 for number two. Right. I got 39 for number three. Okay. 52 for number four. Okay. 52 for number five. Okay. 40 for number six. 23 okay. right. for, number, for number seven. Right. 12 for number eight. Right. Seven for number nine. Yep. 30 for number 10. And 38 for number 11. Okay. Okay, so let's go from high to low and see what we have. Uh, okay. I read my own hand, handwriting. What'd you have for number four again? 52. Right. Okay. So, in, so the t top two, here, here they are in order. Number one and number two are tied. That's increase. So number f number four and number six. Wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Or five, sorry. Four and five. Four and five. Four and five are tied for one, right? If, yeah, they're tied for number one. Okay. Then, then what do we've got? Divert DEI. We have DEI. Is 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 a, is, a, is, is a, yeah. probably number number three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we have um, pandemic, and then waterways and walkways. Forty-three. Yep, pandemic. Yep. And, yep. and then we've got thirty-nine, which is multimodal. Yeah, waterways and walkways got more than that. Yeah, you you said DI and then walkways and waterways, right? Yeah. So walkway and waterways is right after DEI. Number four, then. Sorry, sorry, right? Yes. Okay. Um, walkways and waterways. Yep, and then we have multimodal. Okay. Then we have Lake Point, I believe. What number did we give that then? Lake Point had a 30 score. Right. In ranking, Public safety though. is quite a bit higher than that. Oh, I see. Yeah, my spreadsheet is off. Lake pub, Enhanced Public Safety got 38. So that would be right after multimodal. And we gave multimodal six. Is six in priority? Oh, I thought you were writing down the priority list. I'm just looking at the scores. Mm, right. It's six if you consider the first two as tied for one. Right. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually a little bit confused. It's easy for me at this stage of the game. Um, so I can. Here, we can start from the beginning. And then I can just write them all down myself. Okay, so number one is tied. That number one was tied 52 and 52. So it's uh, between uh, climate action. And affordable housing, right? And affordable housing. So they both get a number one for our discussion purposes, but as we put them out, we can, okay. know, right? And okay. number, number two, I think what we said was DEI. Okay. Number three is pandemic. Okay. Um, number four. Public safety. Waterways and walkways. Waterways and walkways. And oh, then. There we go. Okay. Uh, 
Number five is public safety. Okay. Um, number number, um, five, number five is multimodal. Multimodal. There you go. Yeah. Number five is multimodal. Number six is public safety. Okay. Uh, and then we go way down. Number ten, I think, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's number seven, right? Yes, Lake Point. The seven, okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, implement economic development is eight, right? Yes. Okay, and then fun is nine, and educate is. 10. Yeah. And educate is 10. Yep. Okay. And there's 10 out of 11 because the first two are tied. Right. The first two are tied. So the two number ones are affordable housing and climate action. They're same number. So you can order them in whichever way you want. We can vote them off. We can have a vote off if you want to, if you really want to get the priority or I have no problem with that. Do you want to do it? Do we need to for Rob's sake? Maybe, because we have another tie, don't we? No. No. I, yeah. I, I guess I'm curious, Michael, since you and Anastasia had different numbers, do, is this ordering consistent with your numbers? Yeah, the ordering is. I was just okay. going back and forth. No, 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 we're good on that. I've had, there's no issues there. Uh, I was just trying to follow a lot of numbers. So I was trying to go, which, which, how do they actually prioritize out was where yeah, I was so stumped. Rob, do we need just to have five then? We can vote off between the two. I would prefer you do. Um, yeah. I think it's good to know what the number one goal is and um, also remember when we're figuring out how to spend our time, um, if priorities are competing, I'll, you know, let's, if we ever have a circumstance where affordable housing, housing is competing with cap, then we'll, yep. uh, we'll know which way to go. All right. Okay. We're all here trying to get you out the door. Let's do this. Um, we're going to have a vote off affordable housing and climate action. Are you ready for the comparison? Okay. All those for affordable housing. Four versus three. So your number one goal is affordable housing. And number two becomes climate action. Uh, they all just move down. Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Questions, comments? Questions for Rob, do you have any questions? No. Okay. All right. I think our work is done here. Uh, anything else for the good of the order? Uh, the next steps will be, as we always do, we'll put together a report. I won't work on that. And to not, not, it won't be next week, it'll, it's the week after, but that's pretty typical. So I'll get that to you. Um, right, we'll, we'll do this and, and you'll have it. Uh, okay, the Ox game's on. I won't go through my lengthy thing I was going to do at the end. I'll do something different next time. I want to thank you very much for working so hard in behalf of your citizens. And it's just a pleasure to work with you. Angelia, you're a wonderful addition. This is going to be great for the the council and I appreciate it. So go Hawks. Go Hawks. Thank All you right. so much for your facilitation and everybody, gosh, we made it through. Thank good you. Meeting everybody. We did good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. If there's no further business to come in front of the council, we are adjourned. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.